ready for the pain and feel completely dirty when you're done. Irvin, are you ready for blast off? <laughs> I told you not to eat Indian food, man. How are you blasted off? <laughs> Prematurely. We are at Three Guys Ranch. Arvin, Mike, and Phil. I already feel dirty. Call us at 855-693-GUYS. And if you didn't understand that, let me tell you to English, because that was Puerto Rican. You are listening to the Three Guys Rant. 855-693-GUYS. That's 693-4896. 693? All right, and we're back. And this time I mean it in beautiful Los Angeles, California. Because, boy, is it hot today. This is the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Call in number here is 855-69-3GUYS. Again, 855-69-3GUYS. You can Twitter us throughout the show at hashtag the three guys rant. To start off with, I want to say uh, thank you to uh, Eddie Sells, owner and operator of the Firehouse Food Truck or Firehouse Chefs Food Truck. Uh, and uh, so does that mean that they're all firemen? As far as they know, they are. As they're, far as they know, they are. And operated by a bunch of firemen. Yes, I know that Eddie Sells, uh, big boy. I don't know if you guys have met him before. I met him last week. He's actually, uh, what, do you, what do you call the guy in charge? The captain of the house? Well, I have to find out. I know he's going to come in the studio in a bit, but as far as I understand, he's, he's the big dog over at the Long Beach house. Uh, so, again, thank you for your uh, years of service. Because I know it takes a while for you to uh, get up to that position. But uh, they've been out here at the Rent, Rent Radio Studio since 12 o'clock, feeding us our lunch and anybody else that would uh, be willing to stop by. Uh, but the first thing I want to talk about is uh, censorship here in California, or not here in California, in the States, in America, or, or I don't know if it'd be around the world. Um, wait, wait, wait. You realize so. your topic? So, <laughs> but you, you don't know where the censorship is. <laughs> I don't place. know, because you know what? I'm always pissing somebody, somebody off, but just enough to piss them off, but not enough to get fired. So I'm doing something right. If you say so yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We're gonna leave that alone. His mom gave him a note and asked us to be nice to him today. So, all right, Did go she? ahead. I thought she wrote a note every day. But anyways, uh, AJ Clemente. I don't know if you gentlemen heard of the story, but uh, he started as an anchor man, uh, I believe, in South Dakota. First day out, got fired. Fifteen seconds into uh, into into his first day on the job. Really? And what happened, Arvin? Why did he get fired? <laughs> <laughs> He almost fell for it. Uh, anyways, uh, from from as far as I can tell, and I know our, our uh, sound booth over there, Octoval, it either has pictures and or video. Um, I don't know. It, it almost looks like somebody broke up with them literally seconds before the, the live uh, light uh, went on. And uh, he said some words you weren't supposed to say live on air. Hold on. Let me stop you for one. You know, what's funny is Arvin makes fun of us. Arvin gets mad at Mike and I if we don't do the intros right, if we don't introduce guests right, if we don't bring on... So, I'm just curious. You start off with, we're back. We're back. How about we are the three guys rant I did at say our that. home studio here in beautiful L.A. For those of you that are wondering why Arvin is staring up in space or at least talking about something that's going to be viewed, maybe yeah. you should stream because Arvin never shares that with anybody. You know what? Because the people that I bring to the show already know this. <laughs> that's the little voice in my head already. The tabulet? The tabulet. You have little, little, you have little boys in your head. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you, man? <laughs> wow. You know what? I know you look like a priest today with that black and white ensemble, but <laughs> is that you trying to leave the studio? <laughs> is that your motor running because you're thinking of the little boys in your head? That's my uh, th that's my subconscious wishing I was leaving. <laughs> oh man, but uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know how you go, go and get fired. Literally, the first words out of your mouth ever on the job, you get fired. So do you, do you have uh, the video? That, let's, let's go ahead and play it. My definition. Yeah. Good evening. I'm Van Chu. You may have seen our new AJ on NBC North Dakota News, and he'll be joining the weekend news team as my co-anchor. Tell us a little bit about yourself, AJ. Um... Thanks, man. I'm very excited. I graduated from West Virginia University, and I'm used to, um, um, you know, from being from the East Coast. Okay, well, welcome aboard, AJ. Thanks. Go for it. 
A uh, fatal ATV crash happened yesterday in Williams County. High definition. Yay. Good evening, I'm Van Chu. You may have seen our... Yeah, so I... Again, if you notice, he's looking down at something. I don't know if he's looking at his phone, but not only uh, did he drop some F-bombs in there, but uh, he just sounded like a dumbass uh, when he was introducing himself for the first time. The funny thing is, um, I know... Uh, can I continue with my story? Uh, Boston, Boston, uh, there's good news for Boston. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. before you, you move on. <laughs> Because seeing that video, the, the one thing that caught caught me off guard wasn't so much that the guy, what he said and got fired, got in trouble for, was that, was it North Dakota, South Dakota? I believe it's North Dakota. But there was a an Asian anchor woman. So you're going with racism now. Yeah, I, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. So kudos to them, man. For what? For for importing a, a Japanese woman? I don't know. No, I think she she looks Vietnamese. But I mean, more power to her. Chino I mean, she's, is Chino. She's, uh, she's a news anchor, but so you're saying she's in high demand? So you're saying Chino is Chino? Chino is Chino. All right. Just like Mexican is Mexican, Chino is Chino. All right. No. I can't believe that that's no. that's the part that stuck out to you. Not yeah. not what he said, but the little Asian woman standing to his right. Right. Because what he said wasn't that. Big of a deal, man. Yeah, he, not he, not for you that he, he every cussed, other word is an f bomb. Okay, so he cost on, on live TV. I, I get that, but come on, was it really that critical? I mean, I'm Van Chu. You may have seen our new AJ on. Yeah. Good evening, I'm Van Chu. You may have seen our new AJ on. She North Dakota News, and he'll be joining the weekend news team as my co-anchor. Tell us a little bit about yourself, AJ. Um, thanks, man. I'm very excited. I graduated from West Virginia. The affiliate. That lets you know that NBC lets any trash on air like us. Phil? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. All right. So... Yeah, it, it's it's it was just a dumb mistake. Should he have gotten fired? Who who knows? I'm sure a bunch of little short Anglo women called into the studio and got the guy fired. I'm I'm just wondering how how is that how does that relate to censorship? Because that's how you open the uh, <laughs> the segment. With. I wasn't coming back to that. I figured the Willy <laughs> where, Wonka where? and the chocolate factory in his head had already. The so where's the censorship? I'm and coming back to it. We're coming oh. full circle. Okay. Um, I, I can see I can see it being an issue on uh, on public TV, but I think there's a lot of s unnecessary censorship uh, in America. I think if you're paying for it, or if you have cable, or if it's a service you're actually paying for, you should be able to say whatever you want. If it's if it's internet radio like this is here, you should be able to say whatever you want without uh, having any kind of censorship or, or worried if you get fined or, or fired or any of the any of the uh, of the above. You don't agree? I'm sorry, I fell asleep about 20 minutes ago when hey, your you, segment started. You, you woke up asleep. <laughs> wow. Um, again, help me. What part of censor? You still have not defined censorship. All you're all you're complaining about is FCC rules, yeah, and basic human decency, because people are so lame these days and let their kids stay up until 11. <laughs> okay. So then the government. I, I, I'm to protect sorry. Them. What does a kid being up at 11 have to do with that story? Well, because that's where your that's where your supposed censorship comes into play. You're with, attacking cable with kids. Yes, that has nothing to do with adults. It's because some young sensitive ears might hear. No, no, no. I'm saying cable cable should be uncensored. But aren't the regular pay channels uncensored? Not HBO, all of them. HBO, Showtime, Cinemax. Whatever you see on HBO, you can't see on AMC or or any of those other because ones. It's not a pay channel. But you're paying for cable is what I'm saying. No, it's no longer public. That's because you choose to. Right. You choose exactly. to. You choose to pay for that service. So that doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. Yeah, but you saw that. That was an NBC affiliate, so that means that's you know, it's an NBC station. It's not really, uh, you don't have to have cable to right. get that signal. That's a free channel. Right. Right. So that's the public airways. Yeah, they should have fired yeah, And it's one of those things, man. If you're on the public airways, you got to go by those rules. True. We're in the internet, so screw them. 
<laughs> so you just agreed true, but yeah. Like I said, you like that how full circle. <sighs> hey, drop it. <laughs> Mikey, please. Where's it to bullet? <laughs> You know what? Ar- Arvin's wasted most of that segment on stuff. I- I'll-, I'll never get those 10 minutes back. But um, you want to update us on your Lakers and uh, what happened yesterday? Dude, it was all part of the master plan. Is that what it is? They came out there. You're going to run it down the wire? To see, so they're going to well, lose three games? No, no. And come what back they were trying four? to do is trying to get all the mistakes out of their system. Okay. Uh, so they can come back <laughs> fresh now, now knowing what not to do in order to win. And that is they need to protect the ball. They had 18 turnovers. So that's, what you're saying is the next 12 seasons are just going to be you know, phenomenal because so, this season oh no this season is, all the oh, this is, this is in the wire dude we're going to come back on uh, what's today Monday, uh, Wednesday right we're going to play them over there again and we're going to win that one we're going to take one over there then we're going to come back here for three more games you know what I think is one of the funniest things that I've heard in a long time that they're saying that the Lakers as a whole as a team are going to get their act together and win everything for Kobe. That it took for Kobe to get hurt for them to do that. So, but isn't that the exact same thing they said when the owner died a few months ago? Yeah. But now they're, now they're really going to do it. <laughs> this was, time they mean it. That was for reals, for reals. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last team your, 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 what was the last time your team only scored 79 points? I couldn't even tell you. It's Back when they were all in high school? <laughs> it's been a while. I, I know uh, the, the first half scoring was horrendous. I think they, they had like 39 points. Something like that. I can't remember exactly, but it, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a pretty game. We were behind pretty much the entire game. Uh, it was painful to watch, but hey, what can you do? Okay. You, you just got to move move on. I think they're gonna come back strong, and we're gonna win on Wednesday. And what do they keep saying that Kobe's been uh, texting or tweeting from yeah, his hospital he, bed? He, yeah, he was tweeting and uh, supposedly I don't know. He calls uh, the trainer to pass the phone over to the different guys. Right. So he's right. coaching for the so, hospital. Right. But supposedly wow. him and Coach already had a conversation and he's not going to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Kobe did? No, that was in, in the news today. So I don't know if Kobe said it or it's just the PR department, but they said, yeah, Kobe's not going to be doing that during games anymore. When is the uh, next game? Wednesday night. Okay, so they have a few days off. Yeah, Wednesday, then Friday, then Sunday again. You know, because pretty soon they're going to have a whole bunch of days off. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> All right, if you say so, but yeah, the Lakers, like I said, the Lakers are done. Kobe's retired. Kobe's not coming back. The Lakers are not done, and Kobe's going to come back better than ever, man. Should we make a bet? What about uh, you and your bets? Forget it. No, man. no, no, not even about no. Kobe. That that the Lakers won't go past the series. They, okay, what's what do you want to bet? What do you want to bet? Yeah, <laughs> <I'll> talk about <laughs> talent. Thank you. Let's bet. Thank you. And you listen to the Three Guys Rant on the Rant Radio Network. We'll be back after this. en vivo en Los Angeles y alrededor del mundo. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com The Three Guys Rant. 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 What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Laza with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. This is Anthony Sykes, your host for Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show, where we help small businesses grow and give you tax tips every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Catch us here on RantRadioNetwork.com. Thank you. Hi, everyone. This is Dawn Garcia, and I'm your host of A Taste of Dawn Radio, a show about discovering the passions, the sexy, and the moments we're savoring. Tune in for live music, celebrities, inspiring visionaries, and everything in between. See you every Wednesday on Rant Radio Network from noon to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And remember, live life well. Hey, 
Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. This segment sponsored by Mucho Macho Michelada. Whatever you got to spice up your beer, Mucho Macho Michelada is for you. Did Only you, real men. Did you say Mucho Macho? Mucho Macho, baby, where the real men come to drink. Hey, I don't always drink Michelada, but when I do, I drink Mucho Macho Michelada. <laughs> If only Arvid could be a little more mucho macho. Will it put some hair on my chest? <laughs> no, but te quema entrando y saliendo. <laughs> Streaming live from Los Angeles, the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break. Unfortunately, Arvin's still here, and I'm sure he'll have uh, some more topics. But uh, Santa Claus can't because there's a bunch <laughs> of beer in the room now. I, I think he, that's what I'm talking about. I think he wanted to keep talking about censorship. I think he did. Uh, he was over there putting a duct tape on his mouth, and uh, I got to say that was the first time I was truly in favor of censorship. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we sh- we should have we should put uh, what do you uh, one of them uh, cuff buttons on him. That way you can just kill it from over here, man. You mean no, I can do the and shut it down. It's all a good. Hey, Arvin, all right. So we do it right. Why don't you introduce our guest properly? You know what? I really would love to, but unfortunately I never got his name. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's oh. good. It's, so, it's pronounced Robert Novacek from Fireman's Brew. Robert Novacek from Thank Fireman's sir. Brew. And we've heard we've heard nothing but good things about it. I know uh, Eddie Sells from Fireman's uh, Chef slash food truck. Uh, highly recommended your beer, and I guess he takes your food and, and kind of. Uh, can you can you hear okay in the, in the oh, headphones? Yeah. Okay, he says that he a lot of times does dishes uh, to complement your beer, which means that it's got to be fantastic beer. Well, it's it's great beer. We actually have uh, three different beers. Uh, we have a pilsner, a red ale, and a German doppelbach. And uh, me and Eddie teamed up uh, at a chili cook-off a while back to raise money for firefighters. Right. And uh, we just, it was a natural fit for us to use our beer and his recipes. We pair all three beers with, uh, like, the Pilsner with chicken and fish. Uh, the red ale goes really good with hamburger and steak. And uh, if you're having dessert or just kick it back and relaxing, you want a German Doppelbach. That is our best seller. It's 8% alcohol, but it's really nice. good. Now, help me for a second. I, okay, I, I've never worked at a brewery. I come from the restaurant industry. And I've heard hundreds of variations, but Doppelbach? Uh, it's, it can be pronounced Doppelbach or Doublebach. Doublebach, okay. Yeah, he, either he, way, you can pronounce so it or, either or, way. Or you can call him by his name, Double Dumbass. No, no, no. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, again, there's dessert wines, and I've, just, I've never heard of a dessert beer. Well, if this, you know what? This one has got eight different kinds of malt in it. It has some chocolate malt, so it's a little bit chocolatier and sweeter. So a lot of times people enjoy it if you're smoking a cigar or you're just kind of hanging out. And uh, you know you're just kind of relaxing on a nice on a nice night with. Now some, that's uh, your brewery, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, there. That's well, there nice it is. Place. There's me and Dave. That's I, I'm on the left. Uh, I'm a full time fireman. Now that that's medic. Dave. That's not Eddie. That's I, that's not, Dave. Right, this I'm is the beer sure side of it. Okay. Now let me ask you because we Where, actually where's your brewery by the way? Uh, this shot was actually taken in out like pretty local right really? here. Um, was a place called Skyscraper, and that's where we used to brew. But we got a Ralph's contract uh, last oh, year. Oh, so you guys were in Omani. Yeah, so I, knew, we, I knew exactly we were, where we were. Skyscraper. We were was. in Omani. We were right. brewing the the recipe that I created right. uh, for the National Pilsner and the redhead, the blonde brunette and redhead. And then uh, when we got the Ralph's contract, it was total a capacity issue. I mean, to finance two hundred and fifty. I mean, I'm sorry, finance to uh, supply product to two hundred and fifty right. stores. Uh, in addition, we're in Bevmo. Whole Foods, uh, Bristol Farms, Cost Plus. Uh, we just got Dodger Stadium. We've got two tap handles. We also got Staples Center. So it was a whole capacity issue. So we're we're brewing now up in Northern California at Mendocino Brewing Company, nice. and they can do up to about a hundred thousand barrels. So we'll be we'll we'll be okay. Outstanding. <laughs> and they can brew East Coast and West Coast. Now let me ask you a question. We, the question was actually asked here in the room before you got here. Is everybody in the truck and everybody that works with Fireman's Brew an actual fireman? On our, on our, okay, I can't speak for Eddie. He can answer those questions for you. But um, for Fireman's Brew, on the board of directors, there's eight of us. It was mm-hmm. created by two two firefighters, full-time firefighters, myself and Ed Walker. And uh, on the board currently, there are two full-time firefighters. 
Uh, we have about uh, almost 50 investors that are in the company oh, wow. that are from all over Los Angeles County, all over the state of California that are firemen that are helping support it. So what was, how did it come about? Were you guys just hanging out at the firehouse one day and say, you know what? Funny you should ask. And you're like, this, <laughs> you're like, this Budweiser sucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, uh, being a, I used to brew beer when I was in, uh, in college and uh, came up with this idea, actually sitting up on a hill on a real fire. If you look at the photo right here. Man, talk, right, about, right. talk about being prepared. Yeah. yeah. That's actually that's the actual picture. We're up on a brush fire in the Glendale Mountains. We're super thirsty, and uh, we we uh, they asked us to sit down. The fire was knocked down. It's about twelve thirty at night, and they asked us. Um, uh, we started you know chit chatting about how do we get something to drink, and we started me and Ed started going. We could brew a really good beer, and we could raise money for firemen at the same time. And we came up with the slogan sitting on the hill: "Firemen's brew, extinguish your thirst, ignite the party." And so we marched down the hill at the end there. We're super thirsty, and that's actually me and Ed sitting on the fire truck right there. And we're holding up a Gatorade, but I'm going, Fireman's Brew. Stinging shit thirsty <laughs> night the party. So that's the, that was the dream, and that's how it was created. We uh, give back uh, 5% of our profit goes to the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation, and that helps firefighters all across the United States for anything that we sell, whether it's the coffee or the soda or the beer. Oh, coffee! Too. I knew about the soda, but I you got everything could... for you guys. I got coffee. Now, I was looking at it. So I was talking about coffee. It's I talking got about... cups for you guys. Now, you guys can't really sample this now, but let me uh, uh, tell me uh, a little bit about the soda because I know Eddie was talking about it, and he said it, it, it's it's is that it there? Yeah, this is it, and th and that's this is how. Um, me and Eddie really hooked up besides doing the recipes and us working together uh, with the beer is that he has our sodas all three of the sodas on his truck so we've got okay. the uh, root beer right there which is probably the best root beer you've ever you've ever tasted and uh, we've got a cream soda and we also have a black cherry outstanding so we got all three different beers and you guys can sample all these if you want to I brought a bottle so what's funny is you've got them listed as on duty drinks and off duty drinks exactly right right we're really big on the every one of our 12 packs and everything has a symbol for the national fallen firefighters it also says to drink responsibly the way firefighters fight fire which is safely but aggressively so we uh you know we we really big on don't drink and drive you know what i mean when you're right, when right. you're on duty we've got the coffee and we have the sodas right uh and there's you know there's 50,000 fire stations all across the united states and believe me being a paramedic as well we drink a lot of coffee <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a, t a ton of coffee um so i guess uh, it's my I bottle I opener that is oh, sweet. Wow, that's <laughs> awesome man oh, like, are we gonna try the beer you're, you're like yeah, the walking billboard yeah, absolutely. I, I, i'm all for it sure hey and a quick question so right now do you have national distribution yes we do okay so people can find you at their local Stores, um, they can go out fact, by let, name. let me share with you. So hey, wait, wait, I was wait, looking wait. on the did, site. Did you, did you just notice as soon as he said, "Can we sample some beer uh, <laughs> in here?" The engineer actually left. I think he's making his way. No, in no, here no. no I said to get some. On. But I, I, let me cover that one. So as I was looking at their site, one of the things that was, uh, you guys have done a phenomenal job because most people can't get it down to the local level. So it says here, find a brew near you. Typed in our our zip code um, for this area. Okay. And it comes Perfect. up with ten pages of listings. But I mean, there's stuff that's half a mile. Uh, and you're right, it's Ralph's, some of the local pizza places, some of the uh, Firehouse Grill, some of the other options. That's all. Yeah, you guys have done a really, really good job. Of well, I appreciate thank that. You. Thank you. Thank yeah, the Brew Finder, we update that uh, monthly. And what that does is just lets people type in their zip code if they go to firemansbrew.com, and they can just look right on there and find out where they're at. And that also helps now. We've uploaded uh, the seven states that we're in. So mm -hmm. that's Arizona, Colorado, uh, uh, Illinois. We're doing really well. Uh, so the, it's it's for people all across the country. Now, seven states and ten, you know, coming up here, we're launching Rhode Island, Ohio, and New York. That's, you know, that's only ten states. So there's still 40 states out there that we're aggressively attacking. Now, if you, in, in states that you're not uh, in yet, can people buy the, the beer online? Can They can still go to firemansbrew.com, and, and there is a high, t a high life uh, uh, liquor store that works with us, okay. and they are able to ship it anywhere in the world. And we have sold six packs to Brazil. Uh, I sent some stuff. My wife's Hawaiian, so I've sent some stuff back there to Hawaii. So it's pretty exciting. Nice. This, now, nice. do you sell that bottle opener? That's got to be the you know, coolest uh, one I've uh, ever uh, seen. Uh, quit stealing my thunder. This is yours. I, I wanted to see how strong. <laughs> do you guys have a spectacular site? Their company store? Right out of the gate. they my, got my, shirts, My, my logos, cockles hats. are getting warm and fuzzy. Fire hydrant bottle opener. That <laughs> is awesome. Pilsner? So what you guys are drinking right now, this is the lightest of our beers. It's a Pilsner. And Eddie, how you doing, brother? Eddie hey, just yeah, walked in. Hey, yeah, welcome to the room. Can, can you hear us, Eddie? Uh, I cannot hear you. Can you guys hear me? We're working on it. We're working on it. All right, all right. Oh. There he is. Okay, there I, he I is. hear him now. Can you hear yourself? There we go. Um, we're on. We're on. We're live. Yeah, we're on. <laughs> <laughs> so be, before, oh, how you doing, Eddie? Thank you for coming in. 
Um, thank you for having me. It's been quite the day, and I need this Fireman's Brew beer. Right <laughs> <than that. laughs> thank you, Rob. Thank you. It means you got to extinguish your thirst and ignite the party. Exactly. So I have a question. Um, let's go back about 10 years. This, this is going to sound dumb, but he's going to know why exactly like, why. Like half the crap comes out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Um, my my fellow cohort to my left l- used to like a beer called was it Tequiza? Yeah. Okay. Te- tequiza. Right. Which apparently they stopped making ten years ago because even they knew it was crap. And then what was the other one? Low and brown. Low and brown dark. Low and, or is anything like that? Like well, I'll tell you, you what. Make? You guys can sample Thank all you. three. What I've what I've opened for you guys first was the lightest was the Pilsner, which is five percent alcohol, and it pairs really well with uh, chicken and fish. Um, the second one that you have there is the red ale, which is 5.5. It's got caramelized malt in it, and uh, so it's a little bit sweeter taste. Uh, so we got, and then the last one is the Doppelbach, which again, which is our best seller. So it, if you try them, you might be able to tell, you know, it, what your palate is. Everybody's palates are different. Right. So. See, would you explain that to him? That's what I was trying to tell him. See? He was making fun of me because the only two beers I've ever really, really liked mm-hmm. was Low and Brow Dark when they used to import it from Germany. It didn't make it. It went away. So Armin's like, really? The only two beers you've ever liked, they've both been discontinued. I'm like, what do you want? My, you know, just that just happens to be your t- yeah, your taste, it. your palate, exactly. Yeah. But Armin doesn't understand that. And uh, this is the last one. So you guys have all three beers in front of you guys right now. So you can sample feel? all three and feel free. To I want to see you finish all three beers because that's more 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 beer than he consumes all year. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> in a minute he's gonna go Mimi's. Hence, so. <laughs> hence the reason he used to drink tequila, which is a woman's beer. That is that's that's and, and don't get heavy. too full because what we'll do is we'll actually when we take a break I'll go out there to my uh, the firehouse chef food truck and have my crew bring some stuff and that'll pair nicely with this right now. You would like that Man. one. That's that's dark and heavy. Uh, you know I, I got to say I, I ate from your truck for lunch. Oh yes, we all so did. I'm we all did. Thank you. And I'm still stuffed. Oh, good, good. Yeah, we had the uh, chicken it was, sliders. Yeah, that was awesome, oh, thanks, man. guys. That Appreciate was really, that. really good. Good. And them tater tots. <laughs> yeah, the garlic tater tots <laughs> yeah. are a hit. They're quite the hit. Now, yeah, why are they, they called stinky mics? Because there, there happens to be a stinky mic, and he's another fireman. And, uh, <laughs> is it this mic over here? <laughs> we, we saw that. We fell in love. We're like, yeah, it's the stinky mic. It's, it's, it's not this mic. Right. Don't I'm be looking over here. No, that's that's the stinky mic in the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but this, so. this is good. You guys have done a, a phenomenal job. Um, so let's back up a little bit, okay? So I, I have um, – I, thank you. Thank you. I'm sure, I have two firemen in the family. Okay. Okay. And, um, and I know they're listening. Guys, you suck. You're slackers and you're deadbeats, Okay. Um, so I just want to back up here because if, you know, there's, I know they're streaming. So as you're watching the real firemen who bring me gifts, you see, you see, um, not not just beer, but soda, coffee, shirts, hats, mugs. You guys got everything. So how long? Oh, there we go. There's a website. Yeah. That's the only thing I I missed. I mean, how long has, has the process been? You know, you guys started. Uh, I came up with the dream in back in uh, uh, earlier of 2000, but after 9/11, we actually shelved the company. I'm one of the. Uh, I'm also a USAR firefighter, so I travel uh, internationally with the USAR team. So I've been back to Haiti and New Zealand uh, for the big earthquakes, and uh, I didn't feel comfortable at the time. Uh, with, with, go ahead. Sorry about that. We're going to cut you short here. We're going to our second break, but stick around. We're going to have more from the Fireman's Brew, and we'll be right back. Call the Three Guys Rant now. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. 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 Are you watching the game at home? Why? Come watch it at Mambo Grill, the hottest spot in Downey. You'll have good food, drinks, and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. Anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out, we're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. The 
segment sponsored by Mucho Macho Michelada. Whatever you got to spice up your beer, Mucho Macho Michelada is for you. Did Only you, real men. Did you say Mucho Macho? Mucho Macho, baby, where the real men come to drink. Hey, I don't always drink Michelada, but when I do, I drink Mucho Macho Michelada. <laughs> If only Arvid could be a little more mucho macho. Will it put some hair on my chest? <laughs> no, but te quema entrando y saliendo. <laughs> the experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like Westco Bank Mart, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one -on -one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. We're waiting for you. This segment has been brought to you by Coco Cafe. It's a cafe latte coconut water with espresso. And I came across this wonderful little drink just recently. And it has to be one of the best things I've ever had. I'm pretty obsessed with cocoa water and espresso. So the thought of it together was a little bit, I'm not, I wasn't sure what I was going to get. But my gosh, let me tell you, it's super tasty. It's made with natural coconut water, a strong shot of espresso, and a splash of reduced fat milk. You can visit them online for more information at drinkcococafe.com. Once again, I want to thank everyone at Coco Cafe for being a sponsor of this radio show. Thanks so much. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. As a fireman, I am dedicated to training well prior to me going into a structure fire. I brought that dedication to brewing a good tasting beer. At Fireman's Brew, we have brewed a delicious brunette. It's a German double block that's 8% alcohol. It's extremely smooth and it's one of our best selling beers. It's good with desserts as well as with steak. So here at Fireman's Brew, we encourage you to extinguish your thirst and ignite the party. Cheers! That was Rob was the Fireman. If I say, if I try to say his last name, I'm going to screw it up. So, Rob. Rob Hold on. Hold on. His mic's not back on. All right. There we go. There we go. It's Robert Novacek. All right. Okay, but I, I, I got a complaint. I got a complaint. I'm not one to whine. Of course you would no, have no, a no, complaint. No, no. Hold on. Hold on. Here's my complaint, and the brother will understand. So, it's not bad enough that my wife idolizes, loves, adores, and will probably leave me for a fireman, other than the two deadbeats that are my relatives. Um, <laughs> but seriously... So a six foot four white guy comes in looking like he's from Sweden, and he produces his own beer and his own coffee. Now, I mean, really? Did you have to Rob, steal Rob, every woman are up you on the single? planet? No, I'm not. I'm happily married. <laughs> <laughs> With two Girl, beautiful kids. We're hitting on the guests, man. How many, how many times are we going to tell you that, <laughs> man? But, but you're a handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very flattered. <laughs> That's not a deal breaker, Rob. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, you know what? Holy Arvin, crap. Everybody has their price. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Mine is about two bucks. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, the rest of them are coming for you right now, brother. Wow. wow. Yeah, they got all the hoes you want, man. Wow. Um, so how many firemen... Are actually involved in it, or is it just the two partners? Uh, right now, there's uh, on the board of directors, like I was saying, there's two of us that are full time firefighters, and then we have an additional investors, about 50. And what we do is we do about 70 events a year, so different firemen sign up. We have a calendar that the firemen go to, and then we have we do OC Brew Fest, and we do Mammoth Brewer Palooza, you know, Blues Festival, and the Sony Backlot, and and all the Taste of the Towns, like Taste of the Town Santa Clarita, Taste of the Town Woodland Hills, and so guys sign up. We need about eight eight people to be there at the tent when we're actually pouring the beer, and we always like to have two or three real firefighters that are oh, affiliated so with they us. They don't all have to be firemen. They, they don't. Not not to be an investor in our company, you don't have to be a firefighter, but we just we want to be like 100 firemen strong. I just think right. that would be cool, uh, especially you know having a firefighter from every state. Like we just launched Nevada, and the first thing we did is we went out there to Clark County, went to one of the fire stations, met this really cool captain out there, and all of a sudden he's like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take – I'm gonna run with this, man. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna start selling you guys beer, getting new accounts for you guys, and so he's out there running it, and that's kind of like what we want. A real good friend of mine uh, is an FDNY firefighter, so when we launch in New York coming up here, we'll actually be, be brewing on the East Coast with with Mendocino. They have another brewery out there, and his brother owns a bar, and it's a firefighter bar, so they're gonna have all three on tap, and he's gonna be uh, representing us out there from FDNY. So it's it's exciting to have you know this is fireman's brews for all firemen in the United States. It's not just from that's Los awesome. Angeles. Now let me ask you something. You had the the, uh, the German uh, Doppelbach. Doppelbach. 
Can he be, you know, like in Germany and in, in Europe, they drink beer at room temperature type of thing. Correct. Your brew, will it do well at that temperature? This, the, the Doppelbach will do very well. Okay. It, in fact, I do even drink it warm. Um, my palate, personally, the pills, most Pilsners are a little more volatile. And that's the difference, you know, between an ale and a lager. Uh, basically, that's the two different styles of beer. And <laughs> it's better at a colder temperature. So the Pilsner and the Red the, uh, are both... The, the, for your palate, it'll probably be better if they were uh, a little bit cooler. We keep okay. them at 41 degrees in our cooler, which, was, by the way, is 40 foot by 40 foot. And it was wow. uh, 12 feet high, and it's <laughs> built by firemen. And I'm still nice. looking for a radio station that wants to come out there and go live from inside the cooler. Let's do it. Let's do it. <clears throat> Would that be cool? We could all wear jackets and parkas. Uh, I, I, I was thinking, like, just in my underwear, but I like, <laughs> I like your way better. <laughs> he already he said he's he, married, man. Jesus Christ. How many times? <laughs> he already you said see, he's get, married. Get half a beer in him. That's it. Yeah, I'm going to be on the floor by the third he, time. He's, he's, he's dropping his chonies. <laughs> wow. Goodness. Yeah, hey, you know what's something that's funny when you guys just played that uh, little commercial? You know that last scene there when I'm like, cheers from Fireman's Brew? They were like, okay, you got to do it again with like more emphasis. So they kept going, <laughs> refill the glass. <laughs> and they were like, use the dark because the dark looks better than the glass. So here I am, like on take 50. So drink fire. It's, <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> So there was no substitute, I take there it. There was no, no substitute. substitute for the I just original. kept like, like whoa, it. this is like, you know, take take 30, take 35. <laughs> wow. There we go. It's it's playing again in the corner. But uh, Yeah, if you see at the end, I'm like, fireman's brew. <laughs> Stay with your thirst to ignite the party. So now, how long have you been a fireman? Uh, I've been a firefighter for 15 years. Okay. Uh, on my 18th birthday, I started working as an EMT for an ambulance company, New Hall Ambulance, back in 1988. Uh, I went to permanent school when I was 21, and I, uh, I've been a paramedic for 20 years now. So I kind of went the route. I was out in Ventura County, and I was uh, working out there with a uh, private ambulance as a, as a paramedic, and then also working with the sheriff department, with the air unit, and with the SWAT team and stuff. It was super fun. Um, and then got hired uh, back in 1998. So Outstanding. Extremely happy. Well, what's funny is for once, I mean, all we ever hear about is, you know, FDNY. Right. So, you know, I mean, again, nothing, nothing disparaging about them, you know, what they went through. But at least for once, uh, you know, because we... When we talk to people from uh, back east, we'll be able to say yes, but you don't have a brew, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, now we got Rob out there, so at least one of them does, <laughs> and a bar. Um, yes, yes, and, yes, and but one, it's, one but it's all from here. All, all, right, all I want to be able to claim is from LA, from California. Right. But That's you know California. what? When we start brewing it, it'll be brewed on the east coast. So we're we'll not going to tell them. We're, yeah, not tell them uh, okay. <laughs> we're not. We'll just keep it our secret. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, something that we did mention right before the break there was about 9/11. Actually, after 9/11 happened, uh, because of the USAR team, I went back and, and worked on the pile. I didn't want to collect any money or raise any money, even though it was going to the National Fallen Firefighters. I didn't want to take advantage of that situation. You know, we lost 343 of our brothers. So I actually shelved the company for two years and and felt, you know, after two years, me and Ed dusted it off the shelf and said, hey, this is really something good. We're not going to be taking advantage of the 9-11 thing. Um, we, we really steer clear from that because it's emotionally um, uh, uh, tugging on my heart. And I just, I don't want to have an affiliation that, hey, these guys are trying to make money from 9-11. So we completely just stopped the company for two years. Um, now we're up and running. And uh, at this point, uh, moving across the states, uh, it's it's just so exciting. We're trying to restore a fire truck right now. It would be a great idea. We want to restore a fire truck and then drive to all sweet, these man. states, right, and check in with that all the firemen, awesome. shake their hands, drink some beer with them. It would be you cool know. if you have taps on the side. That's man. exactly that's, that's what, we're what I was thinking. That's, that's what we're thinking, exactly. Some seats up on the top so we could do some parades with the kids up on top. Yep. And we thought we'd do one side would be, like, educational for the kids, like have a big screen and do, like, some stop, drop, and roll right. stuff, have sandwich warmers and, and, like, barbecue kind of a thing, and then the sodas. And then the other side would be for the adults, where you have the kegs and you can like. Right. And when you pull the line, instead of water coming out, it's beer. So oh. you're like, all right, son, so, you got to so walk around to the other side. Daddy's on this side. Right, exactly. Here, so play with mom over there. Yeah. While the kids are getting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, there it is. There's your that. prototype. There's your prototype right there. While, it is. Uh, while the kids are getting educated on one side, that's just getting hammered on the other. <laughs> <laughs> and you know me, me and Eddie have talked about this too, um, about you know incorporating something like that. We're, we're, we've started with the, with the sodas, so all three sodas are on his rigs now, and the coffee. And uh, we're talking about you know that, but obviously, and he can explain a little bit more to that uh, later in the show about uh, the the legal laws that there are with serving alcohol off of a food truck. It's kind of you know we want to be above board. Oh, on yeah, it's that right. Thing. Been there, done that. You're telling me that you as a fireman can't get around the law? Is that what you're saying? I'm telling you, we we follow the law very strictly. I'll tell you the what, last I, thing I, I, I want to do is jeopardize my yeah, day job. My, exactly. my full time job is I'm a fireman say, and a paramedic. And so I don't that's want to that's the difference that. between you and LAPD. <laughs> wow, you want to go so, that route? Really? Wow. You want to go that route? Wow. You realize I have two of those also, right? 
right. Yeah, we I got know. two firemen and two cops. Really, we want to go that route? Hopefully, well, somebody's wrestling in the living room right now. <laughs> <laughs> My neighbor across the street's LAPD. I hugged him right before I came here. You see? You see? <laughs> I'm going to tell him you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the coffee for a second. Okay. I, I noticed the pack. It seems more of a uh, industrial style pack. So th- I take it this isn't over the counter type. Right now, is this just firehouses that are buying it? The one that you have in your hand right there is actually a sample pack. Oh, and, okay. and the idea is we're going to send that out with a mailer to all 50,000 fire stations in the United States. And along with that, um, uh, it'll be advertisement for us. Like, hey, try our coffee. Go to the website. We've got on-duty drinks, off-duty drinks. And so we'll be targeting the states that we're in right now. It's a way for us to get the foot in the door. Obviously, we can't go to a fire station, knock on the door, and go, hey, I got some beer for you guys. That would be really counterproductive in what we're trying to accomplish. So we thought by having the on-duty drinks and having the soda and having the coffee, that's a way for us to get in there and still support and raise money for firefighters. And at the same time, um, you know, it, it just it, it helps out. People, they're going to try the coffee and love the product. You know, anything anybody will buy anything, but if it's not quality, they're not going to buy it again. Right. So we make sure right. that everything that we have is quality, the coffee, the sodas, and the beer. Well, if we're basing it just on the bottle opener, I'm in. <laughs> well, you know, and I wanted to ask about that because you were saying they had it custom made. Right. The, the, the bottle openers are for sale on the website, um, and you did, they just pop right on top and pop it right off. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that was not Mikey's uh, special effects back there. I was going to say, it was funny. Arvin's eyes lit up when he heard that sound, man. It was just, wow. And and what's funny, the price, man, it's not expensive. I thought it was going to be a lot more money than what it is, man. The beer? No, the the bottle opener. The what? The The bottle opener. opener. Oh, bottle opener. Yeah. Our beer is very competitively priced. Uh, like in Ralph's, a lot of times, it's on, I think the sample 12 packs are on sale right now for sixteen ninety nine. So if you look in at Blue Moon, their sample packs or, lo- or Longboard, which is both you know great beers, uh, the Longboard, they're also right around the same, right? $17, 18 $19. Now, Mike and I were talking the other day about some of the other How does yours compare to an IPA, or if you can kind of educate us on that also? Okay, so an IPA, what that's referring to is just your hops. It's a more of a hoppier beer. And we consider this, these all three of these beers, depending on your palate, a more of a transitional beer. So someone who drinks Coors Light a lot or, or a, a lighter beer that's used to more of a almost a watered down flavor, uh, this is this is the start for them. Like they they might come into somewhere and see a Stone IPA and be Jeff, like, if you're listening, you hear he just said your beer is piss wine. I never said. I've been that. telling him for 20 years I that his it. Coors Light is piss wine. I've, I dr- I drink Coors Light. What's wrong with Coors Light? I drink Coors Light. Yeah, he okay. drinks Coors Light. I don't even drink when and there's I nothing I, else. I would not. I would. Not not drink Coors Light. When okay, we were at the golf course and that's all they had? <laughs> <laughs> really? Because you took it from me because it was a tall uh, That I'm was sorry. the one Can we go back to the education? Jumped. So an IPA is not a Coors Light? It is not a Coors Light. So uh, what I was saying was these three are all, they're not very hoppy. In fact, okay. when you probably taste them, you don't have that bitterness flavor. So all that is is the hop. And, and an IPA is just, it's uh, any of the pale ale. So it's, it's going to be much, much more hoppier. Now, Stone has a great double IPA and a great IPA. And, uh, uh, are you familiar with those beers? Yeah. With Stones? Um, so probably our next beer, we're, we're dabbling right now. We're looking at that IPA. So Now let me, ask you, let me ask you a question. Just This is just for my own ignorance. Um, I'm assuming microbrewery is anything that's not Budweiser or Miller, any of those big it's a, names. It's a capacity issue. It's how many barrels that you're selling a year. And, it, and I, I don't want to be misquoted, but I'm not ready for the for the, the exact numbers at the top of my head. Samuel Adams changed it because Samuel Adams ended up becoming not. They were my next question to you yeah, because they, of they, that whole. They ended up not becoming a craft beer, so they changed the number, and I don't know what the, what the exact number okay. is. You could probably Google it and see what it is now. Okay, I know we're going on break here shortly, so I, I definitely want to continue – Continue, because there was a point to my question. Really? Really? That would, that <laughs> would, be, a first. That would be so rare. Folks, if you, <laughs> make sure you tune in, because there's going to be a point to his question. Okay, forget the fact we're trying to help firemen. Forget the fact that there's a beer. Arvin has a point. Please stick around just for that. You just made me forget my point. <laughs> For a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. 
we have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or bread sticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, hot, and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech. And we have a few laughs in between. That's <laughs> right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, and we're back. And the only thing better than uh, one of the Three Guys Rant team is hearing a fireman rant. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know that, was, that was a lot of F-bombs in that commercial. Uh, uh, All right. Well, we were on break. Oh, I'm not complaining. Nah, I wish I, I want to start doing it on air. So we have special in studio guest from the Fireman's Brew, the original Fireman's Brew, I should say, is Rob and Eddie. Robert, Robert, yeah, no fat what? chicks. We need is to probably right? differentiate our two companies. <laughs> yeah, so. I was um, just gonna say yeah. that. All right. That you actually, like yeah, it. Rob, if I may, you know, he'll um, he is the the founder of Fireman's Brew, and they are a beverage company uh, basically, and uh, they do they do beer. They also do soda, which we proudly carry on our Firehouse Chefs food truck. And they also do coffee, and uh, and then I'm the uh, the founder and owner of Firehouse Chefs, which is basically uh, now kind of a multimedia company. But among other things, we're a catering business. We have a gourmet food truck, and uh, we also have some other things that we're doing in the entertainment space. We also do our own spices and food products. Outstanding. Okay. And we have basically our two companies have now teamed up, and uh, you know doing things to kind of you know, promote one another's businesses. Two firefighters that kind of started businesses as entrepreneurs and wanted to kind of utilize you know the fire service tradition as essentially the inspiration behind our products and really kind of give back to a lot of things that that are kind of near and dear to us so it's pretty cool that now obviously with them being a beverage company and us doing food we're able to kind of get together and we have now created recipes that utilize the fireman's brew products within you know the cooking that we do and they post that on their website. And we've even created recipe cards that are eventually going to go into the packaging um, throughout the country as their uh, products are dispersed. So, Eddie, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I know um, Rob was saying that for the most part, he wants to do firemen across the board. Is everybody on your trucks a fireman? No. We, uh, we have um, basically a blend of mm -hmm. uh, firefighters and uh, chefs, which is kind of the whole idea behind firehouse chefs um, so the the inspiration again is the fact that there are firefighters out there that are very very good cooks like myself that have gone to culinary school but then the uh, the reality of running a business comes into play <laughs> <laughs> so firefighters obviously their their profession is their their number one career if you will you know and that's what they're going to be devoted to um, I do have firefighters from all over the country and here in the Southern California area especially that still come out when we do a lot of our charity events, a lot of our larger events, catering gigs, and what have you. But for the everyday gourmet food truck operations, I utilize, you know, my staff of uh, of chefs and, and employees. So what was it? I'm assuming I, I don't know what, what came first, firemen or cooking? Uh, well, for me, I started in high school as as a firefighter, as a volunteer okay. firefighter. Um, but then shortly after that, I joined the Navy and uh, went to culinary school. So I and that's well, you know 20 years ago now. So uh, they might be telling you that my car's on fire in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? We have firemen here. We got here. beer. We can put the fire out. <laughs> yeah, and 
they can burn, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, 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 I guarantee you, Mike, Mike to my left would not let you use the beer to put it out. He'd be like, let it burn, let it burn. No, Any, no, anything no. but the beer. I was yeah. going to say, for Mike, the beer. Quick, quick be everybody, it. pee on the car. <laughs> say, according to Mike, the You better start drinking here. Let me get the other 12 pack. We'll open it up. That, that would be alcohol abuse right yeah, there. You see, so Mike, uh, Mike, Mike, you know. Mike's also the one that says, you know, he doesn't go to meetings because it's only for quitters. So that's that right. Means, <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I don't want to be anonymous. I want everybody to know. So hey, how, how long have you been doing the truck? The truck? We just uh, completed our first year of business. And uh, we actually uh, we started the catering business about uh, five years ago now. So the, the truck was just kind of the, uh, the next progression. So now we actually have uh, some interest from other not only firefighters, but other uh, people um, out in the business community that have expressed interest in uh, licensing trucks in other cities. So, you know, we have uh, started talking to some people in uh, San Diego, Chicago, uh, the Bay Area. So two franchise trucks, right? Either either franchise or license. One of the one of the two. But I've never heard of that. I mean, I've heard of that in in the in a business model, mm-hmm. but. Has anybody ever done that before? Because I think even Kogi that has multiple trucks are still owned by Kogi. Correct. Uh, well, Grilled Cheese Food Truck actually just uh, um, basically they turned into a franchise recently. So, oh, wow. Yeah, they now have, um, I believe they have three trucks out of L.A., um, soon to be a truck in Orange County and, uh, at, you know, two or three trucks in Phoenix, Arizona. And they've kind of established a, a franchise packet now, if you will. That is pretty awesome. That's, yeah. that's probably the easiest way to get into... I guess the restaurant business right. without that huge overhead. Which we are, and that's another thing that we are looking at doing as well. Um, I'm actually looking at a space in Long Beach right now uh, for our first um, FHC kitchen, which is kind of our, our uh, firehouse chef's restaurant concept. Right. So there's a lot of exciting things going on as well. Hey, I'm curious, and I know this is slightly off topic, but I come from the food industry. Yes. And up until four years ago when we started doing this for years, and you know, as a lot of the trucks were up and coming, Restaurants were just decimating you. I mean, uh, you guys were the nastiest words that could be heard. Right. Because uh, supposedly you guys were just raking in the dough. Uh-huh. You have no overhead. It's nothing but profit. It's the good life. Mm-hmm. And that's absolutely true. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason I, I asked the question is because he seems like the first real one we've ever met. When he walked in as angry as he was about his car, I thought, you know, he's the one I finally want to ask. And where I'm curious also is how several places went the opposite direction. They opened a restaurant. Decided to abandon the restaurant, go into the truck, mm-hmm. and yet I find that more and more trucks are going back into a land-based mm-hmm. operation. What, yeah. do you, what do you say to that? Well, you know, um, there's there, and you bring up several several key points. There are several questions, and it's funny. Even as I, I meet uh, restaurant tours, if you will, and I try to even talk to them about my restaurant concept. If somebody's been in the restaurant business for years and years and years, they know, you know, and, and Abe, you know, who's right behind me. He's been in the restaurant world as well as an executive chef and uh, and the and the food truck world. So we've both seen, you know, both sides of it, restaurants and the food truck world. So there's pluses and minuses to both. So a restaurant person might say like, well, why would you want a brick and mortar restaurant? For exactly the points you were talking about, all the high overhead, the this, the that. You know, you guys, you guys have the autonomy of going wherever you want. It, this and this and that. Well, then there's the the small print, and the small print is, you know, I have to have a business license. And, all, you know, and pretty much every community within Los Angeles County that I want to operate in, right? Because every everybody wants a piece of the pie. So you start adding up all the fees. You start adding up all the, you know, the BS that comes with running a truck, basically. And, and then it starts kind of becoming a wash as far as why the food truck versus brick and mortar. You know, well, that's of late, isn't it? That's where more... <clears throat> and I, and, I'll, and I, I can say it because I, I do a lot of fundraising mm-hmm. for um, one of the national charities. And I've watched these cities nitpick you guys to death. Because they figured it out. Okay. Yeah, they, so because in the beginning it, it wasn't that way. Right. You're right. And, and, uh, and I think uh, the restaurant in- industry kind of was like, you know, waving the flag saying, hey, check this out. This is, you know, basically BS. These right. guys are killing our business. But now, now that even the restaurant community, now that they have seen that food trucks are here to stay – and, and people really appreciate the fact that they can kind of go and explore different cuisine in a not so, you know, maybe uptight setting or whatever. And, and you have that autonomy of, of sampling different food. Um, we've actually paired up with a lot of restaurants now and have done kind of like their overflow, let's say. Like on a big Fourth of July event, for example, a restaurant might say, like, you know, work a deal out with us and, and figure out, like, we can still bring in a lot more customers have you guys out there to kind of feed part of the crew, you know, the, the crowd, 
and still make money, you know, and they obviously have their bar and they can uh, still have their alcohol sales and it's kind of a win-win. So I think it's kind of, and, and, you know, the way I look at it too, is if you have both, then it's just the, you know, the best of both worlds. So your food truck is going around town every day as your advertising, if you will, and your billboard for your, you know, your brand recognition and then you know taking it home to your brick and mortar establishment well you've had you have a lot of restaurant chains that are putting out now food trucks like we know sisler is doing it well, that's right right, yeah. right. it's been a lot of uh, just pushing trucks mm -hmm. out but what's funny is and i guess where i'm going with it is, is this is a question for both of you is that fireman's brew i mean that category as a whole up until about three years ago we came across a lot of people who would have never used the word new beer new a product new item let alone an IPA, craft beer. You know, you had some of the chains like the BJ's and some of the others that were doing the in-house brewing right. who are starting to gain traction. But most people would have never contemplated putting it out there because in their mind, it was locked up. You know, over the last uh, last year, it was a 30% growth with craft beer. And then uh, again this year. So the last two years, it's been 30% growth. It's, it's very exciting for our industry because uh, having craft beer like you, in the 80s, you, they, there's a saying that, hey, if you were trying to start a beer company, you, you, were, you were a moonshiner. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well take your money, put it in a barrel, and burn it. Like it just wasn't well, catching on. It wasn't taking see, it. It was coming the full circle. This is coming back to my point. The reason I was asking what exactly the definition of a microbrewery is or, or any of that is because there's actually one here, well, not really a microbrewery, but that's all they serve. I don't think they have any big name in there. But on the wall, they have, you know, interesting facts. And the one that stood out to me the most, actually the only one I remember, is that since 1880, 2012 um, had the most uh, microbreweries in the country. That are opening, correct? Correct. correct. It, now, it didn't say that they were open throughout the year. Some might have opened, some might have closed. But as a whole, in the whole year, it's, I think, it I think it's almost doubled or tripled. It's, it's up to like three or 4,000. It's, right. it's I think, very I, exciting. I think it was like 2880 in yeah, 2012. Yeah, like I think it's almost 3,000, yeah. And, okay, and we'll have to see the numbers at the end of uh, 2013 going into 2014. And like, you know, we discussed off the air real quick, you know, uh, Miller went ahead and sold Corona for right. $22 billion. And, and I'm hearing that they're now looking in, you know, more craft beers or looking into those craft beers. So that and it's great. I, I'm so excited, and you know, you know, Eddie, being in Los Angeles, you walked into a bar before, and what did you see? You saw Bud, you saw Miller, right? And you might have seen Stella or something, and that's all you saw. Three tap handles. All the bars you go into now, some of them 30, 60, 100 right. uh, tap handles, and they've got chalkboards up on the wall, and they have, you know, some of them are now going to video screens that are up on the wall with all their different craft beers, because I think America as a whole is finally. You know, got, gotten up and stood up and said, hey, you know what? We will enjoy a better tasting beer. Well, let, let me ask you this. Um, the Yard House, for example, I okay. think they pride themselves on having 100 different We're types We're in the Yard House, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're in Dodger Stadium, too. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. in Dodger Stadium, too. So. That's awesome. Be so, careful. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so that, no, no, that was my question. So is it, because I think, I don't even know if it's 100 beers or 100 taps. I think it's, it's 100 it's, taps. It's 50, it's 100, correct. It's 100 taps, it's 50 that are mirrored. So it's, okay. but it's really exciting. When I walk into the art house, I get excited. And I always try to, even is though. Is it the women in the room? It's the beer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love to walk up and down, you know, and just say, hey, what's out there? What's new? What tastes good? Like, let's try right. this. Well, and you know what? My palate's different than everybody else's. I might he, try something and not, you he, know. Here is the coolest thing that I found out maybe about six months ago that I think every Tuesday they have a random six pack. Right. Now, I didn't know that. I always, I'm like, are those like the handicapped beers? What's with that placard just hanging there? I, I think that that, I don't want to touch that one. <laughs> is, that, is, is that a new term, really? A handicapped beer? I was going to leave it alone. I, I'm not going to touch I, that no, one. No, no, no. I, didn't mean, I, I meant as, as in maybe the tap's broken kind of thing, not as in beers that handicapped people drink. <laughs> Wow. All right. We're, we're coming yeah, to the top maybe of the hour. Handle um, deficient beer. <laughs> there you go. How can we? No, I, Eddie said that. I did. Just like our, like our brain deficient co host over here. Wow. All right. We're coming to the top of the first hour. Those of you sick enough to stick around for the second hour, we'll be right back after the break. We've got special in studio guests, the Fireman's Brew and the, what's the name of the truck before? Firehouse Food Truck. Firehouse Chefs. Firehouse, Firehouse Chefs. Chefs. We'll be right back after this. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Laza with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night 
from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. This is Anthony Sykes, your host for Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show, where we help small businesses grow and give you tax tips every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Catch us here on RantRadioNetwork.com. Thank you. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech. And we have a few laughs in between. That's <laughs> right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. This segment sponsored by Mucho Macho Michelada. Whenever you got to spice up your beer, Mucho Macho Michelada is for you. Did Only you, real men. Did you say Mucho Macho? Mucho Macho, baby, where the real men come to drink. Hey, I don't always drink Michelada, but when I do, I drink Mucho Macho Michelada. <laughs> If only Arvid could be a little more mucho macho. Will it put some hair on my chest? <laughs> no, but te quema entrando y saliendo. <laughs> Streaming live from Los Angeles, the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break. This is the top of the second hour with special in studio guest, the original Fireman's Brew, and get his name right because I'm going to screw it up, Arvin. Rob. Rob No Fat Chicks. <laughs> Wow. Um, was you, that not you it? You said it. I didn't. I'm going to leave see, that, that one That is the only way he will remember that name. But you'll never forget it. He will never forget it. Right. Hey, He's Rob, a- I got a question for you. You know, in, in today's um, m- market, you know, there's more and more of the craft beers, you know, the IPAs, the micro brews that are going on out there. Um, when you came to market, other than the novelty, let's start with that, because th- there's a certain amount of sympathy that goes with firemen. There's a certain amount of immediate acceptance. Uh, I've tasted hundreds of them over the years. Whoa, 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 guys. whoa. You tasted what over the years? All the different beers, the micro brews. Oh, you're talking about shows. firemen. <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> micro brews, wow. Um, so you know, I've tasted hundreds of the micro brews, gone to the shows. And at least, and again, I ended up liking the brunette. I, I like the darker. Uh, but some of them, well, I'm going to say the vast majority, but some of them just royally sucked. But... To your point, there, there's a, there's something out there for everybody. Exactly. There's everybody's got a different palate. So how did you guys combat that? I mean, after you got past the novelty, if I'll, you will, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. We actually went in, uh, me and my partner. We drank about a hundred beers. We sat there and drank different beers and decided what do we like, what is good to our palate, and what do we want to give out there. Like what what do we want to represent us? And like I said earlier, we knew. Anyone will buy something once as a novelty, and they'll buy something once to get back to firemen. But if it's not a quality product, they're not going to buy it again. And that it speaks for itself for us. We're going on our second year right now in Ralph's that, that it's a good, well-selling beer, and it's a good product. Um, I, I think when we first started it, that was our intention from the beginning. So it wasn't like, hey, can we break through the novelty part of it? From the very beginning, we were like, we, we held back and said, let's get this right. Let's get a good recipe. Let's make it a quality product. Let's get the, you know, the, the graphic design really good. We came up with the Maltese cross idea. The slogan was really catchy and we really liked that. And also, you know, our message of giving back to the national fallen firefighters. So we kind of put that all together and took our time doing it. I mean, it, it took it was probably six years until we actually were in stores. That's awesome. Okay, and and thank you for answering that. That was one of my biggest, you know, questions about because you see so many of the new ones out there. And to Arvin's point, the, most restaurants you go to, anybody that has more than a dozen handles, is rotating flavors like they're going out of style. Right, and, they're, they're and trying to find the right mix. You know, a lot of people the the beer festivals are real trendy. People go to beer festivals and then you can try all different stuff. And right. you'll, you'll hear one guy standing there and he'll be trying some like an oatmeal stout and he'll be like, "This is the best thing I've ever had." And somebody <laughs> else is having like a barley wine and they're like, "This is delicious." And we, we've had guys come to up to us and say, "Hey, your red is good, but if it just tasted a little more like this, I would love it." And you are what you are. We have, you know, you, you know what I mean. We, right, we right. perfected our product and we we have it. We uh, we test everything that comes out goes to a lab. We make sure that it's that the integrity. 
integrity is good. We check it for any kind of bacteria or anything. We also make sure it's the right ingredients. You know, we're, we're really, really hard on ourselves to make sure that we're giving that quality product out there. And so, you know, there's, there's different flavors. There's different tastes. We, we could sit here all day. I mean, you guys should have a show where you just, like, bring in, like, tons of different beer and just sample <laughs> all the different beers. Oh, we, 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 we can that do one that already. anytime you yeah, want. You, you, and can, also, you can line them all up. Like, you know. And also, when you're doing those tastings, when you're a new friend uh, drinking 100 different kinds of beer, <laughs> right. if you need another palate, just, you know, call me. Hey, what do you think? <laughs> you know? and, that's, and that's what it is. We've, you know, we've done some shows, uh, the, uh, kind of webcasting stuff. We'll go out with guys brew in their, in, their, uh, in their garages, and they're brewing really, really good beer. You know, we try their stuff and we go, dude, this is delicious. It's great. But there's a there's a step between just brewing something and it tastes good. And, and what, what ends up happening is that capacity. It's like it's one thing to brew a keg. Even if you, you can fill one keg, right? It's, a, it's another thing to start saying, well, now i got to supply, say, three stores. So I need X amount of kegs and I also need to be able to bottle it and I need to get it shipped to that store. Like it, it just keeps going and going and going. It, like the the uh, logistical nightmare of not not nightmare nightmare but challenges that are there. Because you could be brewing it in your garage and everybody on your block could love it, but now you want to expand to the local tavern. Okay, how do you get the product to the tavern and have it taste the same and keep that quality there? So I think some people never move out of their garage and they're comfortable with it. It's funny you say that because you know we, I mean? we've got a few friends who that's all they do. They they right. they brew at home. Right. And for Fourth of July, they've got a mix. For Memorial Day, they've got a mix. For Christmas, they've got a spicy kind of mix. But yeah, they could not go past the bathtub. bathtub. Right. (laughs) Yeah, the bathtub. And you know what? I encourage everybody, though, same way we did. We went to a a place in Huntington Beach called Brew Bakers. You guys can all go down there. You guys can go down there as a station and go down there and say, hey, we're going to brew our own beer. And you guys can brew a keg of your own beer. Bottle it yourself. Brew Bakers. Oh, brew Bakers. Up, man. We gotta, brew Bakers yeah, off we of Heil Street. We and that's where that's where me and Ed started. That's where we first went and started brewing kegs at a time. That's and what I was going to ask you, though. How did you, how did you know, how did you learn about the beer business or, or how to make a beer? Um, well, making beer, like I said, I made it in college. I just okay. bought a kit. I used to make it and, and actually put it into one of the big sparklets. Are you telling me jug? that those things that look like footballs that for nineteen ninety nine at Dude, CVS work? They make good beer. <laughs> do they really? <laughs> they do. I'm I've never you. bought one because I like if that. You, is... If you follow the directions, so you don't. This is what guys do. You know, we talk about that IPA thing. Guys get all crazy with the yeast, and they're like, <laughs> oh, "I want a double. I want a strong alcohol, right? And I want IPA." And so they right. go for a lot of hops, and they don't follow the directions, and they end up with this catastrophe. I think I think the first beer that I ever did brew myself, home brewed, when I got done drinking it, there was all this like sediment in it, and it like took the skin off the inside of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, you got to follow the directions. You know what so I mean? If you follow the directions, they right. work, and, and they don't explode. Some people do it in apartments as a fireman. We go on calls. I mean, people can over, you know, their yeast. They can overdo it, and, and the, the stuff will explode. Like, really? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Wow, dude. Oh yeah, because it, it's if it's capped and the cork's on it and it, it'll just and like champagne. So it, it's oh. it's and they're looking for more alcohol. And so that's the thing. If you follow the directions and keep it nice and clean, you know, right. beer is very simple when it comes down to making it, but at the same time, it's very temperamental. Um, if you do little tweaks, it it can mess it up. And as you start to get into bigger like volume. That's where you have the problem. You know, you look at, at uh, uh, someone like Samuel Adams, who is distributing all over the United States, all over the world, that, you know, they're still going to have a great quality product, but they're doing it in mass. And yeah. as you expand that, you have to keep that quality there. And it's, it's difficult because temperature can tweak it, can change it, uh, different amount of yeast and, and all these now, different things. L- let me ask you that. I know right before the break we were talking about uh, that specific company. You were saying that they that they actually had to or somehow move the numbers to keep them in right. the same you, category. Correct. They, well, Samuel Adams now. I think I believe it's twenty thousand. Uh, it is twenty thousand. You guys, yeah, you guys could probably Google it and see what the what the limitations are. But I believe they bumped it up just because Samuel Adams was having such a, uh, a great response internationally that they were starting to brew more beer that they weren't considered a craft beer. But then ask yourself this question: There's a lot of people in the world that are now enjoying craft beers well, that already have, but there's a lot more people in the United States. Just right. because more people's palates are now enjoying a better beer, does that still not make them a craft beer? You know what I mean? They started as a craft beer. Right. In our lifetime, it just so happened that they were so successful. You know what I mean? But hence the Ponder reason. That. That, but, but I think what happens is if, if we don't, if the marketing industry or the industry as a whole doesn't diminish the true quality of something, I, I think it doesn't level the playing field. I and see I what you're saying. That, so, yeah, that's a good point. You know, because one of the things you get into is for years and years and years, we won't mention any of but they've always talked about the burger wars. Right. But just because somebody has 14,000 units and the other one, or what is it, 25,000 units, the other right. one has 18,000 units, the 18,000 units cooks it one way, but they're no longer 
a quality product. Now they're mass produced, and so I, I think what happens is that it, it kind of takes away from. Are you the, saying McDonald's doesn't make a quality burger? I didn't say that. Well, you know what? I, 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 I think you bring up a great point. It, I think the the issue is is as the founder of the company and as the chairman of the company, do we keep this quality product the way that it is? If are you going to start cutting corners? And that's the issue, right? If somebody was making a great hamburger, and I'm just throwing a name out there, Wendy's or whatever have you, and it was like fresh, freshly made or whatever else, then all of a sudden they switch and they go to a frozen patty, which I'm not saying Wendy's, I'm just saying any kind of burger place, and it all of a sudden starts to change the product and it starts to taste differently because they're cutting corners to make a profit, then that then that's, you know what I mean? Right. And, that, and, that, and we've, we have, I put my foot down and have said, we will not do that. We're going to continue to have a good quality product. As we grow, we're just passing on this good quality product. But let me ask this, and I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily the same question, but what if you as a company have certain supplies to your beer that you're getting from a very specific vendor? That vendor either shuts down, retires, goes under, whatever it might be. If you're getting the exact same thing from a different person, does that necessarily change the product? That, that's a good question, and, and you have to be careful of that as a company, especially as a beer company with growth. You have to make sure that, that where you're at, that mm -hmm. the facilities that you're using, the people that you're involved with, that they are strong and that they are a good quality. Mendocino Brewing Company is an excellent brewing company. I don't know if you guys have ever had a chance to get up there. It's up in uh, Northern California, but if, if you guys ever get a chance to go in there, they brew a great product, and they've right. done a great job. Our brewmaster's up there uh, helping them out with that, and as far as the product, if you're referring to the barley or the hop or whatever else, that's grown all over the world. And it's, we use, you know, out of America, we use American hops. But okay. you, you can get, you know, hops or barley from anywhere. I think uh, the, the different strands are 18 or 28 different strands. So, um, you know, it's just it's, – it's, it's something that you have to believe in. And like when I was telling you about how we monitor that is that we check every batch that's made. And with craft beer, there's always going to be a little bit of a difference, right? When you're every time you brew a batch, and when we when, when it goes into the tank, it's going to come out. It's going to taste slightly different, uh, but it's still going to be good and it's going to be quality. So it might like sometimes when we do the dark, it might have a little bit more of a chocolatey flavor. Uh, you know, it's a great product. It's a great product. I, it's just I immediately thought when you guys were talking about burgers, I thought about um, In and Out because I know a few months ago there was it was all over the news because I guess whoever supplies them with their meat. For whatever reason, they weren't they weren't in business anymore, and everybody was saying, "Well, it's going to completely change the product, going to change the flavor." I'm like, a "Cow's a cow. I don't I don't necessarily see it being different unless a cow is a cow." I'm just saying, cow's a cow. <laughs> I love In and Out Burger, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's why our Arvin can buy the same burger from the big box stores as a Kobe beef burger, right? And it's the same because it's, it's just a cow, right? It One, one's that. just juicier. <laughs> <laughs> Arvin, I worry about you. We're coming up on our second break here in just a second. When um, when we return, we're, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk more about the uh, Fallen Firemen's Association. Absolutely. Talk about the charity and uh, what's going on. I know for the longest time before we go to the break, there was uh, Mike and I, where at least I was addicted to Rescue Me. Oh, and, I love that show. And, yeah, uh, great show. A lot of the firemen, a couple of the, my family used to talk about how, oh, that's not real, or oh, you know, they push it. But the one thing I always thought was great was when, like, Dennis Leary, I guess, was donating the fire trucks or trying to raise money for them. Uh huh. You know, I, I think people have a, a misperception of, you know, that you guys are overpaid, you make too much money, why do you need more help? We, we, we don't get paid for what we do, we get paid for what we're willing to do. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> Go ahead. You walked into what? No, uh, just rewind. It sounds like something that we get uh, hit up about quite a bit. Yeah, so when we come back from the second break here, we're going to uh, delve more into that, so okay. just so we can touch on it, because I know that a lot of people, you know, we hear, especially here in L.A., we hear about the budget cuts, and they go over all the different scenarios, and you guys are one of the first ones, they always slam. <laughs> you listen to the Three Guys Rant on the Rat Radio Network, with special guest in studio, Eddie Sells and Robert No Fat Chicks. <laughs> okay. Call the Three Guys Rant now. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. Rant. Rant.
As a fireman, I am dedicated to training well prior to me going into a structure fire. I brought that dedication to brewing a good tasting beer. At Fireman's Brew, we have brewed a delicious brunette. It's a German double block that's 8% alcohol. It's extremely smooth and it's one of our best selling beers. It's good with desserts as well as with steak. So here at Fireman's Brew, we encourage you to extinguish your thirst and ignite the party. Cheers. Why? Come watch it at Mambo Grill, the hottest spot in Downey. You'll have good food, drinks, and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. Anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out, we're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. Hi everyone, this is Dawn Garcia and I'm your host of A Taste of Dawn Radio a show about discovering the passions, the sexy, and the moments we're savoring. Tune in for live music, celebrities, inspiring visionaries, and everything in between. See you every Wednesday on Rant Radio Network from noon to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And remember, live life well. This segment sponsored by Mucho Macho Michelada. Whatever you got to spice up your beer, Mucho Macho Michelada is for you. Did Only you, real men. Did you say Mucho Macho? Mucho Macho, baby, where the real men come to drink. Hey, I don't always drink Michelada, but when I do, I drink Mucho Macho Michelada. <laughs> If only Arvid could be a little more mucho macho. Will it put some hair on my chest? <laughs> no, but te quema entrando y saliendo. <laughs> Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break. And before we make uh, too much fun of the guys for getting overpaid while they sit around uh, watching, let me see, the last story I heard is they're all sitting around in their recliners watching the big screens on the surround sound. Getting all the chicks. Getting all the chicks, waiting for a car fire or a kitty in the tree. Let's talk about... The Fallen Firemen's Association. Uh, National Fallen Firefighters was actually created by Congress back in 1992. And what that is for, that's for firefighters all across the United States. Um, in the event of an in-line-of-duty death, it helps support the children. It gets them education. It helps to support the, the spouses in the event of the death. Um, it's it, You know, here in Los Angeles and New York, the infrastructure is in place that if we have an in-line-of-duty death, there's a lot of people, a lot of life insurance, and a lot of the departments are there for them. But there's, you know, people that are volunteer or call firefighters back in, like, Texas, uh, Nebraska, Idaho, where they're just, they're, they're volunteers. You know, uh, something happens like what we just had happen at the... Uh, in West at, Texas. Uh, yeah, at West Texas, at Texas at the uh, fertilizer plant. There, here you have, five, what was it, five firefighters that were killed in the, in the explosion and two EMTs, I believe. Um, and when something like that happens, it, this was created by Congress to directly get them money uh, if the infrastructure wasn't w in place as far as them. So we believe in that. Um, anything that we sell, whether it's a hat or a soda, coffee, T-shirt, we give back 5% of our profit to the National Fallen Firefighters. And we, we, and we want to be transparent about that. So that's I got a question because, again, nobody here at this, at, at least on this side of the table, let's just be clear because I don't want to include you guys Speak in our shenanigans, yourself. but nobody on this side of the table is overly fond of Congress and, and, and their stupidity. <laughs> My question to you is, why does a fund even have to be set up? You, I mean, I'm just curious because I was under the assumption, as I assume many people are, that you guys were already insured to the hilt because of that. Because you made a comment in the last one. It's not what you get paid to do. It's what you're willing to do. Well, there's, there's 50,000 fire stations in the United States. Not all of those are paid. Some of them are volunteer. A lot of them are paid call, which means they just respond. There's, the infrastructures aren't in place for, for that. And so that's why they actually did it. That their, their answer to your question is no, there wasn't a lot of things that were out there for them, especially for the volunteers. Wow. Right. Paid, and, paid and, there, and there is to a certain extent. You know, so the bottom line is, is that uh, 
um, you know, we're, we're kind of uh, firefighters, law enforcement, first responders, we're, we're a necessary evil. And uh, we happen to kind of, unfortunately, people utilize us, um, you know, whether it's politicians or whatever, but, you know, mm -hmm. when the, when the, you know, when it all kind of comes into play, we're here for the community. We're here for one another. And so a lot of these things that have, that have been established are for ourselves in the event of tragedy and, and just kind of basically, you know, taking that extra step for people, you know, when, when it's not really there. And again, I, I mean, I, I, I'm biased because on this side of the table, I happen to have both. I have, uh, I have firefighter and police in the family, uh, several ex-military. So, so for me, it becomes a little more biased, even though at dinners, uh, we like making fun of them. Uh, you know, we'll do the whole mm -hmm. that, you know, they're, and it's funny watching the firemen make fun of the police and, you know, the police make fun of the firemen and talking about how, oh, well, you know, the bunch of girls who showed up on the truck who wouldn't get off until we secured the scene. And, you know, and then, of course, you're the firemen say, yes, but if we didn't put out the fire, you guys wouldn't go to get the bad guy. And it goes on and on. And on. It's, just, it's right. spectacular. These, these are great dinners. It's, well, you know what police banter. officers and firefighters have in common, right? What's that? They both want to be firemen. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And I have a brother that's a cop, so <laughs> I, trust me. You know, the same kind of banter goes on all the time. I like it. Yeah. I like hey, Eddie, it. also f on your your truck, you have several charities that you support as well, right? You yes. have four groups yeah. you work with? Just like Rob, I mean, we, we you know, from the inception of uh, Firehouse Chefs, uh, we always wanted to give back. So um, we happen to, the charities that we uh, represent uh, are the Firefighter Cancer Support Network, the Wounded Warrior Project, and the Burn Institute. Mm -hmm. Those are the primary ones. Uh, we do at other times give to other charities. And as a part of our spice business, for example, uh, we have chefs around the country. So part of the deal that I've made with them basically is they're able to kind of, you know, in their local community, whether it's Seattle, New Mexico, Texas, wherever we have other firefighters that fall under the umbrella of firehouse chefs, they're able to kind of, you know, take that local charity and give a, a proceed of the sales back to that community or, you know, that charity as well. You said something earlier that, that struck me, and I wanted to cover that a little more in detail. You said that you're not just a food truck anymore. Now you're a multimedia, and I, I lost the second word that you were using there. Multimedia company. You know where I actually picked that up from was actually just by speaking to other business people and venture capitalists. And, and literally, as they kind of looked at everything that has been created now, they actually kind of you know gave me that, that title, and, and it, it made a lot of sense just in terms of when I structured Firehouse Chefs, and I always kind of had a vision, and I basically utilized uh, what we call in the, uh, in the fire service the incident command system, which is an uh, organizational flow chart, if you will, that shows kind of all the di different divisions, you know. And so if you think about Firehouse Chefs as being the, the parent company, underneath that we, we now have multiple divisions where there is a restaurant division, there is a gourmet food truck, there is a food products and spices, and there's also a TV show that we have um, been trying to, uh, to pitch now for the last several years called Firehouse Chefs. So now I, I heard it. I won't disclose it, but I think it's a phenomenal idea. No, I, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah, we wow. all we all agree. So, <laughs> the uh, the TV show actually, you know, was what kind of opened the door to everything else. So by shopping the TV show and figuring out that um, I needed basically kind of more in the war chest, if you will, to have that credibility and have that that resume that backed up you know, why, uh, why my concept as opposed to somebody else's. And we've now really established that credibility. We're now actually going to start doing a, uh, a monthly feature in uh, Firehouse Magazine and Firehouse.com, which is the largest fire service-related magazine and website in the country with uh, 3 million or so viewers now, a month. Is that your, your magazine as well? or is It's that not my magazine, it no. An it's, okay. it's an existing, and we're now going to have a Firehouse Chef's corner um, as part of it That's which awesome. is huge you know because uh, what what has happened over the last five years by kind of you know just uh you know all the all the grunt stuff all the you know um just basically kind of showing our true colors we've really established our credibility um as to what we're all about and donating our time so now that we're kind of turning more into uh, the business side of things we have the support of labor and management which is incredibly important and and we've always had the, the support of the community nice now, you're both active firefighters? Yes, yes, I'm a fire captain for the Long Beach Fire Department. Right. You're active. And then the, the department doesn't try to dictate or, or meddle in your business? Now, uh, you know, as far as, you know, you're using the fire. <laughs> the you, you, fire. See, you see that hat you have on right there? That's yeah. a fireman brew hat? I'm wearing my fireman brew hat today. The, the, all right. <laughs> and, no, but, and, you know, I'm sure you guys got regulations and stuff, right. things that you can't say or, or not be associated or affiliated with kind of stuff. 
Right. Has that affected your business at all? Um, like Rob said, when we uh, we're in the, this role right now, we're representing um, our respective companies. And if you even look at uh, the wrap on my firehouse chef's food truck, for example, um, you know, there's nothing that identifies like the Long Beach Fire Department, let's say. So those are kind of the, the parameters that we ha we understand that we work under. However, you know, we do do things obviously for um, fire departments and uh, and our, you know, the the firefighters basically kind of, um, for example, we've really established ourselves as kind of a, uh, the, the catering, you know, the go-to catering, if you will, whether it's for retirement parties, birthday parties, weddings, and we're doing it from Ventura County all the way to the Mexican border. So we'll travel anywhere, which is pretty cool. And firefighters yeah. really want to support another firefighter-owned business. Now, I think the most important thing that you haven't brought up, and I take it because you're very humble, um, here at Rent Radio Network, we had, we, we've had a food truck here every week for I don't know how many weeks. And I got to say, I love them all, but I'm going to be biased on this one. Yours is literally my favorite truck. Um, I was actually out on the field on the other side of town, and I stopped because I, 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 I had space. I came to have lunch here, uh -huh. and then I went back out. Um, it's, it's, it's exactly that. It's a gourmet truck. I mean, the, the, the food that you put out, I'd expect to go spend 20 to 30 bucks for the sliders that you put out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's just phenomenal. Um, the tater tots, everything about it, everything I've had from your truck is just absolutely delicious. I really appreciate that. I mean, when uh, when I kind of when I came up with the menu, uh, first of all, we had to take into account what we were able to do at the moment. And as as we continue to grow, and whether it's have a restaurant or have a bigger commercial kitchen and expand our menu, uh, what we were able to kind of pull off in the confines of a truck is exactly you know you know why the menu was tailored right. that way. But at the same time, you know what you're not going to lose is flavor. Um, or quality, you know, and all the chefs on the truck are completely, you know, capable and and not only that, but we, you know, I routinely kind of challenge them to come up with specials, and uh, you know, we're always posting our specials on uh, Instagram or social media, and it's just it makes it fun, exciting, it changes it up all the time. Well, everything's fresh, everything's delicious, and I challenge you: can you name a restaurant that has quail leg on the menu? A restaurant, quail egg? Yes. Yep. Well, I mean, I can, but that's, that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, and and to go to backtrack a little bit, you would never spend twenty or thirty bucks for sliders, <laughs> cheap steak, right? So, could be right? I, I didn't there, say buddy. I would pay for it. I just oh. said be on the menu. Oh, okay. But anyway, so to show an example of of uh, how good the food is, you have quail leg on the menu. We do, we do. Um, it was it was absolutely probably one of my best burgers I've ever had with quail leg. Quail egg burgers? Well, well, we it's it's uh, it's one of our um, we have these, these special editions that we have, and uh, one of them is called the El Hardin style. And everything on the truck, everything on the menu is basically inspired by a firefighter, and in one way, shape, or form. So El Hardin is actually he's a good friend of mine. He's a captain on the Long Beach Fire Department that designed my logo. So the the firehouse chef's logo that you're looking at, he actually is the artist that uh, came up with that. And uh, just as a tribute to him, I'm, you know, anything that I've ever wanted to do as a as a thank you to the people that have, you know, stuck by my side through really thick and thin, um, is is do something that kind of you know shows my appreciation. So El Hardin style is uh, basically our our grilled onions, sautéed mushrooms, and our fried quail egg that goes on top of our sliders, whether it's carne asada, chicken, seared ahi, or portobello mushroom. Carne asada. It's pretty, deli it's pretty is, delicious. Is <laughs> I, I can't even compare this carne asada <laughs> to, to anything else. It, it's just it's just delicious. You're always talking about another man's beef, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get it, man. We've been doing this. Anyway. First off, I was talking about his huevitos, not the meat. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, I, I, I got nothing. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to leave that one alone. Uh, so are there any special events or anything that's coming up that you want to plug or push or – Fundraisers. Yeah, if you go to the Fireman's Brew website, that we actually have a calendar on there. So you can just go to firemansbrew.com and look at the website, and there's so many events that are coming up. We're probably – we do all uh, – like Eddie, we do a ton of the uh, Memorial Golf Tournaments, uh, but bigger than that is our beer festivals. We have a ton of – a whole slew of them that will be coming up. Uh, Camarillo, mm -hmm. Casa Pacifica, uh, Mammoth. I always encourage you, if you guys have never been, uh, Blues Palooza up in Mammoth, it's, like, incredible. Over now, 70 different breweries. The yeah. people that go and help you – at the event are those all firemen or are for those the most volunteer? part well they're either they're either work for the company and they're on the board of directors uh, or their wives or mm -hmm. or uh kids right and also um firefighters we bring a slew with us so every event we do we probably have two or three fire we're working firemen there at the event that are helping pour the beer 
Nice. And just like uh, just like Rob's, um, we also have a calendar, and uh, obviously on any of the Firehouse Chefs social media, you can always find our events. We, w- we will be doing something together this Thursday, though. We can maybe talk about the Leatherheads ride. Oh, we'll, Leatherheads. We'll, we'll talk about that right after this break. We're going on another break. You're listening to the Three Guys Rant on the Rant Radio Network. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, hot, and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech. And we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break. Mike is looking for more alcohol, and we were going to cover... What were we going to cover? I don't know. I'm looking for a blonde. (laughs) (laughs) No, I know you like it dark. I'll I'll, I'll take a redhead, too. We're we're going to talk about... Yeah, we're going to just uh, talk about... Uh, an event that uh, Fireman's Brew and Firehouse Chefs are going to team up on this uh, Thursday. I believe it's the 25th. But, uh, you know, a lot of what we do is obviously giving back to um, our, uh, our the different charities that we um, both, uh, you know, love and, and admire for what they do. And uh, also there's a group called uh, the Leatherheads, which is um, basically it's a, it's a motorcycle um, club. club, yeah, if you will. It's made up of firefighters from all over they're now national, but uh, this particular chapter is uh, from here in uh, Southern California, and they're going to be doing a ride uh, coming up on Thursday, taking out off to uh, Laughlin. So this uh, Thursday, this up. Thursday, okay. and they're going to all they're going to meet at uh, Angel Stadium, and uh, the Firehouse Chef's food truck is going to be there, and we're going to be serving delicious breakfast burritos. And uh, Fireman's Brew is going to be uh, donating a bunch of beer for breakfast That's <laughs> and soda. Yeah, and soda, soda, soda yeah. for the guys that are going to ride. I was saying nothing, nothing like getting a whole bunch of firemen liquored up before they head out to Laughlin. <laughs> I knew, I, I saw that. I saw you like leading in. Yeah, I knew you were going. Like, uh, now, now the yeah, only question we I had say we're going to drink it there, but <laughs> anyway, yeah. the only question I had again is if I show up in a, in a little uh, moped of some sort, can I can I be fed? Not that if you have a fireman brew hat on, no shirt and tight pants, absolutely. You know what? That's so not, like, that's, that's not a deal. What, I mean. I already threw up a little bit of yeah, my mouth. You, you, you really want to? You want to ruin the moment? You want Eddie's food? I just, oh no, no! You don't. You don't want to say that to Arvin because no. that's a typical I'll, Friday night's outfit. <laughs> yeah, and they obviously, you know, we've uh, we've discussed uh, Rob's beer a lot. You know, Fireman's Brew beer, but uh, their sodas. Uh, I mean, we sell out. You know, all the time on on our food truck, and uh, you know, there are three flavors of sodas that they have are delicious. And, uh, you know, we've actually created a lot of recipes with the sodas as well. So you can go to um, 
Fireman's Brew website and to the firehousechefs.com and see some of the stuff that we've created utilizing uh, their products. So how does one go about creating a recipe with soda? Uh, a lot of trial and error, <laughs> actually. <laughs> but, right. uh, you know, if you, if you understand food and flavors and uh, you're willing to take risks in the kitchen, it's really not that big of a deal. So if you kind of understand that um, a lot of really good sauces utilize things like uh, Dr. Pepper or root beer or some other things like that, or like soda recipes, you know? Right. Um, so if you just kind of take that concept and you already know that if you're looking for something that's going to have that uh, that balance of sugar, you know, and, uh, you know, something that's going to bring it a, a little flavor complexity, uh, it's it's no problem and it's a lot of fun. I like it. I know my grandma and my aunts, they all cook with beer. You know what? I, I just got to say uh, with that whole uh, outfit for Thursday, my phone's actually blowing up <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got your leather chaps, bro. You got or the what? hat. <laughs> you got the hat, the leather chaps. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Oh, there oh. is. That was the last event we went. There was Arvin. Oh, <laughs> that was wrong on so many levels. Is that really you? <laughs> <laughs> let, let me read the last one that came oh, through. Shit. Yeah, it, he's going to be the... Uh, <laughs> He's gonna. <laughs> do, do you you're speak? gonna be the new. Yeah, si puedo hablar español. Why, okay, well, I, this is the last message I got. Your favorite outfit, puto. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be the new Jared. Uh, you know Jared for Subway. Yeah. <laughs> if that was really you, and maybe we could say you've been eating on the Firehouse Chef's food truck for a year. There you look go. At the, look at the new Arvin. You know. You know what? I'm. I, if you're offering free food, I'm in for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Yeah, we'll don't. Take care of you. don't. Yeah, yeah, don't. Don't. No? Okay. don't. Nah. The problem is he'll go the opposite direction on you. <laughs> Caller, you on line one. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Oh, yes. No. How can we help you? This sounds. What like does a, that mean? What does oh no mean? This sounds like one of those angry, bitter women that's always <laughs> calling you. I'm one of your lifelong listeners. <laughs> yes, we recognize their voice. Well, okay. Well, I just had a question for the gentleman. Um, yeah, what's first up? I want to say, no, they no, cannot. They cannot the put your fire out. Oh, not me. The, yes, those guys. The um, the two firemen that are sitting there. Now, thank you for everything that you do. Now, where do you see your business? Uh, both of your businesses in the next maybe five, ten years. What do you see for the future? Rob, you want to start? Uh, sure. Uh, you know what? Right now, we're in seven states, and we'll be in ten by the end of the month. And I, I would see us uh, probably. 25, 30 states down the road. Our goal is to raise a million dollars for the National Fallen Firefighters. And I, I would think that once we get up around 20 or 30 states, what's going to happen is there's probably going to be a bigger brother up there in the world that's going to see our uh, success. And, uh, and, hopefully, and hopefully, you know, we have an exit strategy, uh, purchases of the company. And if that does happen, uh, we'll be able to, to raise that million dollars for the National Fallen Firefighters. So that's my goal, is to be in all 50 states and raise a million dollars for the firemen. Nice. Very good. And I'd have to say the uh, you know the firehouse chefs we have um, a similar vision. I mean I'd, I'd definitely love to see um, our firehouse chefs food truck all around the country and obviously uh, restaurants. And part of the whole thing behind firehouse chefs is the fact that it's really really showcasing the diversity of today's fire service. And essentially, even if I go back to kind of what the uh, premise of the TV show would be about, is the fact that today's fire service doesn't look like it did 30 years ago. So today, you know, the fire service really reflects, you know, the diversity of America. So and that's kind of what I started to pick up on just even as a fireman and a firehouse cook, let's say, is the fact that we were getting, you know, things that were uh, Latin inspired, Asian inspired, um, all these different dishes that were coming into the firehouse. And, you know, again, you couldn't have, you know, really do the same type of thing when it was meat and potatoes 30 years ago. So that's what's pretty cool. And being able to kind of show people in the community that. The fact that we have to cook under a budget and with time constraints, I think that resonates to Americans out there. Nice. Well, I can I can also say that I tried the sliders and they were the best. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> oh man, that, that means and, you were and, here in our property. And, <laughs> yes. And you know, maybe you right just me? maybe the guys will go ahead and leave me a beer so I can go ahead and drink that later. No. Oh. But no, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Well, how about I, a soda? I, I heard nose across the board. <laughs> it's it's already gone. That calendar. I'm going to be looking for that calendar as well. The, the three guys calendar? No, the fireman's calendar. Oh. I'm, right. I'm going to start the, the. I'm going to end the phone call the same way it started. They're not going to put your fire out, lady. <laughs> hey, you never know. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Right. Thank you very much. Thank doing. you. Hey, quick question. Uh, to, 
either one of you guys, <clears throat> you know, you always see on TV how at, at the fire at the firehouses, you guys cook your own meals pretty much, and you see the firemen at the local grocery store yes. buying their food. Is there like a designated uh, cook? Do you guys take turns? Do you guys, if the food is not good, do you? If it was up the, to me, it, it'd be Eddie. Right. Well, that's typically what happens to me uh, on my crew. That everybody kind of like looks and says, you know, like, what are we going to do today for chow? And it's kind of like, well, and if I'm not in the mood, you know, we'll typically end up buying out and supporting the local restaurants, you know. <laughs> but uh, it's all the above. I think uh, different fire departments have different traditions where, you know, maybe the uh, the rookie cooks or every guy on the on the crew has to take a turn cooking. But yeah, if you're horrible, trust me, you're going to do very little cooking and a lot more cleaning. You know, at our house, we've got a guy that's a – he's a pretty good cook. Hey, Mo, you've met Mo before mm -hmm. at the Chili Cook-Off. Uh, it just rotates through. It's on mm -hmm. the schedule, and everybody has your cook day. Go to the store, and we – it's about two meals, about $10 a guy. So we pay for now, our own now, meals. Now, let me ask you a question. I know oh, real quick, only because we got a caller at line two. George? Yeah. Uh, you got a question for the guys? No, I had a question for Arvin. Oh. Oh, oh dang. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, George. Uh, no, I was – about his outfit, his favorite outfit. I've seen him wearing it. <laughs> uh -oh. Really? Yeah. Uh -oh. where, where was this at? At the supermarket. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. Oh. I was at the supermarket wearing that? Yeah. He, was, he had roller skates on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, that's the new firehouse chef's hey, food truck. Isn't uh, that, is that the slider he bought? Books for books? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Eddie doesn't want his slider associated with that. He's like, no, no, no. That no. wasn't the slider. <laughs> <laughs> SS fat guy, huh? Maybe the garlic tater tots if you eat uh, you know, too many of them. But. You know, you know what the funniest part is, is that the uh, fireman in the room actually asks, is that really him? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you clean up nice, Arvin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. George, thanks so much for calling in. No problem. Thank you guys you have a great much. show, man. Take care. <laughs> I clean up nice, but I wax even better. What can I say? I was, oh. I was waiting for uh, Manny Pantalones to call in. Oh, oh no, 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 Please. That guy's banned. Oh. <laughs> Manny's banned. Today. That was horrible, man. Oh, nice. No, no, no. No, we got, what, we got what, rid of him. What I was going to ask is I know a couple times, and I'm sure it has to do with, with uh, being able to respond, but uh, if if you have a rookie that has to cook dinner, does everybody have to go in the big red truck in front of the uh, supermarket? Wouldn't it just be easier to send him in his little Hyundai? Um, would it be? That's a definitely a little <laughs> question. You know what? We, uh, we have to stay together. In, in Long Beach, for example, we have uh, four-person companies. So um, every person on that fire engine has a designated role. And literally, you remove one of those um, people out of that role, and you're now, you've you know, decreased your effectiveness on whether it's a heart attack call, a structure fire, whatever we respond on. So right. that's the reason that you see um, all the firefighters together at the store you know, shopping. And because uh, literally, you, you, know, you never know when any type of emergency is right. going to arise. Okay. And we just, you know, we just saw that in, in Boston. We just saw that in Texas. We see that every year here during the wildfires. It's one of those things when people want to, um, you know, maybe be a little bit concerned about uh, what firefighters make or what their pensions are or any of that sort of stuff. It, you know, we essentially are truly like car insurance. I mean, I guarantee you, you know, you hate paying for it, but you're glad it's there when you need it. Oh, right. absolutely. The other thing that trips me out is that. When you're trying to get to the emergency, people don't move out of your way. Right. But if they were on the other side of that, right. you'd want them to show up as quick as possible. Exactly. Now, let me ask you a question. Is there ever a time, I know, I think it was up in Calabasas over the weekend. There was a fire out in the middle of nowhere. Uh -huh. Is there ever a time where you just say, screw it, just let it burn? Um. <laughs> you want him to say that on open air, yeah. right? Yeah. That's he's he's going to admit that, right? I mean, this yeah, is going to go on the YouTube. And does. Yeah, well, yeah, well, the forestry does. They do to a certain extent. There's still going to be uh, control lines eventually. And it's not going to typically happen during fire season. You know, okay. there are times when it, it's outside. I, I actually used to work for the California Department of Forestry uh, for some time before I worked for Long Beach. Now, is so. that the company that goes out and purposely sets fires? Because no. if I'm not mistaken, there is somebody who does that, isn't there? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Not the fire department. Okay, no, my, no, my, no, my, no, no. my, no, no, wait, wait, wait. I'm not, I'm not asking hey, there, you. No, there, how about there controlled is what a, burn? Yeah. There you go. Oh, there exactly. You go. Controlled there, burn there controlled to prevent. Burns. Right. Future but or it's catastrophic. Still a fire. Right. Okay, but they don't go out and purposely set and it, them. And it's just not a company. I'm not talking about arson. I'm talking about like out I know in the what forestry. you're saying. Yes. Yeah. And it's there, not a there company. Are, there are controlled the burns. Um, they do happen. Um, you know what's what's happening in California though is you're seeing you know the fire season increase where we we basically have a fire season that lasts the entire year. You know, and you're seeing fires 
in November, December. Uh, it's not, it's not, and you can attest to this too. So obviously, whether we want to start going into the whole, you know, global warming thing or whatever, <laughs> um, but you can see the frequency of fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll stick to uh, food and beer, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll come back and talk about, uh, yeah, global warming. But uh, you are no seeing such thing. Al Gore is wrong. <laughs> uh, you know, there is a frequency, though, in the uh, amount of fires, you know, year after year. So but to answer your question, when do they ever not do anything? When I did work uh, for Cal Fire in San Diego County and fires would start on the Mexican side of the border, <laughs> they would do nothing and literally wait until it burned to the U.S. So that was pretty interesting, literally having a bunch of fire engines lined up at the border and waiting until it came across. Because so they were going to use it as a smoke screen, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, right? man. Yeah, that, that was good. Oh, <laughs> my God. All right, we're coming up on our final break, and we'll be right back for the last segment. We've got the Firehouse Grill, Firehouse Truck. Firehouse Chefs. Chefs and the yep. Firemen's Brew in-house. We'll be right back. This is Dawn Garcia, and I'm your host of A Taste of Dawn Radio, a show about discovering the passions, the sexy, and the moments we're savoring. Tune in for live music, celebrities, inspiring visionaries, and everything in between. See you every Wednesday on Rant Radio Network from noon to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And remember, live life well. Experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like Westco Bankmark, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. This segment sponsored by Mucho Machu Michelada. Whenever you got to spice up your beer, Mucho Machu Michelada is for you. Did Only you, real men. Did you say Mucho Macho? Mucho Macho, baby, where the real men come to drink. Hey, I don't always drink Michelada, but when I do, I drink Mucho Macho Michelada. <laughs> If only Arvid could be a little more mucho macho. Will it put some hair on my chest? <laughs> no, but te quema entrando y saliendo. <laughs> Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. Anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out, we're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. As a fireman, I am dedicated to training well prior to me going into a structure fire. I brought that dedication to brewing a good tasting beer. At Fireman's Brew, we have brewed a delicious brunette. It's a German double block that's 8% alcohol. It's extremely smooth and it's one of our best selling beers. It's good with desserts as well as with steak. So here at Fireman's Brew, we encourage you to extinguish your thirst and ignite the party. Cheers. The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Hot topics and headlines. Love, doctors. Politics. Arvin's Corner. The Three Guys Rant starts now. The Three Guys Rant. Rant. All right, we're back for the final segment. And before I go any further, I'm getting texts over here that want me to recognize the lovely Aaron in the back of the room. And Abe stepped out for a second. Apparently, they've been here okay, all wait, day wait, cooking wait, wait. lunch. Let her wave again. Let her wave again. Let her wave again. There she is. Oh, we dropped your, your mic oh. there for a second. There go we ahead. go. There you oh. go. Are we back? All right. Yeah. Abe had to go check on my car and make sure it wasn't on fire. <laughs> <laughs> we 
<laughs> discussed that earlier in the segment. Now, that, now is he a fireman? He, he's been with me long enough to where he understands the principles of fire protection. Absolutely. And, okay, okay, that's good. And he's that's been good. a chef in the kitchen for years. There you go. So, yeah. Now, let me ask you this. If if a fireman's car house, barbecue, mm-hmm. so on and so on, catches fire, does yeah. everybody else give him crap? Oh, of course. Absolutely. So it's kind of it's kind of like it is here then. then. Oh, oh yeah. it's yeah. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Th- yeah there's but no they, they also it. show up quicker to his house. <laughs> that probably is house. true. <laughs> See, and I would think it's the opposite. If it was me, I'd be like, ah, no, 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 no. All that crap he was talking, making fun of my team, we're going the long way, baby. <laughs> it's funny you say that, yeah, because uh, if certain addresses pop up on our uh, computer screen, you know, you might say like, hmm, you know, <laughs> <laughs> make a left right now. <laughs> I think going left right now seems a little bit more appropriate. The traffic is flowing a little better. Oh, now, man, how many? I, I got a question for you guys. Um, I know you have the trucks, you have the other, but the one that's always made me laugh is the uh, the ladder truck. Mm-hmm. How many ladder trucks do we need in these areas? Because we see them here around the studio from time to time, and it seems like it's a nightmare for you guys to maneuver that thing around, and there doesn't seem to be that many high-rises or any industrial areas that would require that. Well, in, in Long Beach, I'll, I'll start with uh, Long Beach. We have actually over 70 high-rises, and so you know the need for for ladder trucks um, in a obviously in a, in a city that has a downtown area that's what you primarily would think of. However, the the mission of the ladder truck compared to the fire engine is different. So even if there aren't any high rises, um, the the say here at this um, industrial complex, you know the mission of the ladder truck is to provide ventilation. Those guys have all the the neat tools, the chainsaws, ladders everything you know so their mission is basically above ground you know on the on top of the building and to open everything up and to you know uh, force entry on all the doors and everything in conjunction with the fire you know the fire engine that has the water the hose that's on the inside of the structure so basically it's that tandem attack that we do um, you know strategically to, to put the fire out so that's kind of why uh, a ladder truck is equally in, important as a fire engine. It's just a different mission. What What is the reach of uh, one of those uh, ladder trucks in height? Uh, most ladder trucks, they have a 100-foot aerial. So just depending on the spot, it's it's roughly 10 stories. That's pretty high. That's pretty yeah. high. What's, uh, what, not, not funny, haha, but the other day I was watching an industrial fire burn, and some of these guys, you know, they were pulling up in the ladder trucks. And they start walking on the roof. Mm-hmm, now, exactly. I, I, you know, I understand you guys all have a rhythm. You understand what you're doing. It's your job. But the first thing that went through my mind is, and, and the fire was, was going pretty good. I thought, okay, I would have thought somebody would throw a bag of cement out there first. Let's just see if the damn thing falls through before you put a. That's it. You got, before you ever step on a roof, you make sure you sound it, as I'm sure Eddie will let you know. But, you know, it, you climb up to a ladder, you get up on a roof, and the, the last thing you want to do is go through that roof. And right, we have right. lost a lot of firemen across the nation from that happening. So you bring a tool with you, like a pike pole, or if you don't have that, you can use your axe. You smack down on the roof really, really hard, and you try to uh, read the roof and look for the members and walk across on the members. And you never want to do what's the faux pas, which is called going cross country, where somebody sees the fire over there and goes diagonal across the rafters, and all of a sudden that roof gets through. If you ever have a chance and you want to see it, it's very educational. But if you just uh, uh, Google like firefighters falling through a roof or whatever on YouTube, you can see all these firemen that are that are up there from a, a helicopter view. Where they're trying to go cross country, or that just the roof, you know, the fire load underneath is just too big, and uh, the roof gives way. It's a dangerous job. That's why. Nope. That's why we, you know, get the big bucks. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, that was the point of that. Whole thing. <laughs> now, is nice, there any, nice is, one. is there any one job that <clears throat> nobody really wants because it's so dangerous? Is there like that one specific position in the fire department? Hmm. I, I think mean, we I, all I, being a fireman. I mean, I, I understand. The, the one thing that I don't, you know, I'm on air operations. I'm on Swift Water Rescue. I'm on USAR. I'm on the task force. And I, I do all this stuff. Almost a lot of my overtime is on the copter. So I love going out the door of a copter. And I love fighting fire and brush fires, structure fires. But the hazardous material stuff, that, that to me is, you know, when the guys, I got a lot of respect for those guys when there's like a tanker on its side on the freeway. We right. don't because those are the guys that sleep all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they get Rob, paid Rob, for Rob has they, a different That's uh, what they do, what they're willing to do, right? They put that whole class, that level A suit on, and then you see them out there walking like the guy on the moon, and they're walking out there, and that stuff's eating through the concrete and eating through everything. And, yeah, uh, again, it, it very much takes a special individual yeah. to actually run into a building as it's on fire. Right. So, I mean, for any of them, I wouldn't want to do any of them. That's the best part. For firemen, that's the best part. When it's on fire, you want to get inside there, you want to save a life, and you want to fight fire. That's... That's awesome. You know, so but but at, only, at the, the same was. time, we don't uh, you know we don't take that lightly at all. And I think every time that uh, 
I know, for example, um, any time that I've been to um, a high-rise in incident, let's say uh, post 9-11, and as I'm you know, climbing up those stairs with my crew, and, and I think about what those guys, those 343 guys, did that morning of 9-11 and died, I, I mean, it's just, it's incredible, you know, because knowing that at some point they knew, they knew they were done, you know, they, they all knew that they were not going to come home, but yet they continue to climb those stairs. And those are the kind of people that are out there serving the community. So that's what everyone has to kind of remember, basically, you know. Right. I think they should uh, get a raise. Arvin, thank you. Not only is he the uh, new FHC food truck spokesman, <laughs> <laughs> but he's the new spokesman for the fire department. He's gonna be, he's gonna be the new union rep. I love it. I love it. We'll get things hey, done so in thirty <laughs> minutes and a taco. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be coming up to uh, the last uh, moments of the show. Oh, Again, real quick, let's, Abe, let's talk Abe's about, in the room, yeah. real quick. Chef Abe. Yes. We just wanted to say thank you, buddy. You, you cooked some delicious sliders today. <laughs> they, 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 they gave me a text, and they scolded me for not recognizing the two of you from earlier. So, you know, we did want to say thank you for the food you cooked all afternoon. And, and uh, in all honesty, also, Abe's literally been with me from the inception of me, you know, coming to him and talking to him about, hey, bro, I got this great idea, <laughs> you know, and it's going to suck. It's going to be hard. And, and he's still with me. So I just want to let say me thank ask, you. you know what? Since OK, so since you've been around and if you want to answer for him the other day, we somebody was talking to us about one of the trucks and, oh, you know, it's got to be the good life. And they only work when they want to and they go where they want to. And it's, you know, four or five hours a night and you just go park somewhere. You make all this money and you go home. So that's called a hooker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? That's that enough for those services. Well, yeah. So, uh, you know, t tell somebody, I mean, how, how yeah, many that's, hours? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> oh, right. oh there's the picture. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's an incredibly hard life. Um, you know, these people are very, very dedicated. You know, all the people that work in the, in the food truck industry, and it's one of those things that uh, whether it's restaurant or food trucks, only, only the business owners or the employees that actually work on it, you have that mutual respect. And you'll find what we do at these different uh, food truck events. You know, we'll trade food, for example, with one another. And it's, it's, it's kind of our own little way um, within the community to say thank you and appreciate one another's service. Because, like I said, only just like a fellow firefighter, um, only people in the, uh, in, the, right. in the food industry understand the sacrifice, uh, you know, of going to school, of everything it's a grind you know and abe's done like i said he's done the food truck world and he's also done the um the chef world so um and he's you know he's always been in the in the plan from the you know the start of this whole project so it's kind of cool to see all these things starting to unfold and develop hey Abe, question for you which one is harder restaurant or truck You know what? I, I I was I'm thinking he's gonna say restaurant, but he keeps looking at Eddie. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I, I see restaurant. Eddie doing like one of these over uh, here. <laughs> he well, said restaurant. You know, I, I, the, the last chain I was with, you know, I, I'll leave the name off, but I, I had a couple of executive chefs that I had to oversee for our catering division for the stores, and I swear I wanted to put them through a wall about every other hour. You yeah, know, but those guys they, were crazy, man. They were in, yes, but I mean, <laughs> a lot of those executive chefs at that level, and you start doing some of the big uh, five-star catering and some of the big events, man, the egos on these guys and the mentalities, it was just, you know, I mean, we're good friends to this day, but I swear, I mean, there was at least four or five times he an hour. He looks like a mellow guy, I want to kill him. <laughs> he is. He is. <sighs> yes. And you know what? And we've catered, actually, and, and we've been, uh, I'm proud to say that we've done things for, you know, as few as uh, 10 people all the way to over 2,000 people now. Wow. So it's been pretty cool. And uh and we've been well received by not only the fire service but even the culinary world. So it's been cool. That's awesome, That's gentlemen. We're coming down to the yeah, wire here. There's the, about two minutes sites. left. You want to plug your sites? Any events? Anything? Twitter. Charities? How to reach you? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, just want to thank you guys for having us on the show. And uh, Eddie, thanks for inviting us out here. I think it's a great relationship that we have going here um, with uh, Fireman's Brew and uh, Firehouse Chefs. Uh, Go out to uh, the website. I mean, go, uh, go out and see Eddie and go out to a website and see uh, firemansbrew.com. And you can see our calendar. You can see Eddie's calendar. Uh, go to Ralph's store, BevMo, Whole Foods, Bristol Farms. If you're out there at Staples Center or out there at Dodger Stadium, drink a Fireman's Brew. But just uh, I'm encouraging you guys to check out the recipes that uh, Eddie's made because we're brewing with beer and brewing with soda. And better that's the yet, best thing. Better yet, find the truck and try the sliders. Right. Thank was, you, Arvin. Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ask him, ask him for that. Guy. I'm telling you, he's the new Jerry. Come out to the Leatherhead <laughs> so you we all ask see him, you. Ask yeah. him for that no. little webito on go, top of the burger. Go yep. by, by your favorite Ralph's, pick up a six-pack of Fireman's Brew, then find a truck. You know what? There I've done go. that before, but I usually end up in handcuffs for drinking in public. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, again, 
it's it's uh, great what we're doing. The uh, the partnership with Fireman's Brew is awesome, and uh, and I applaud Rob for the vision and what his company has done. I mean, I think it's so cool, and uh, it's cool to kind of continue to grow together. And you can uh, follow Firehouse Chefs on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and obviously FirehouseChefs.com as well as our website with all the content. So now, yeah. just thank you guys for everything. Do we have, have two two Twitters, right? We do. We is do. one yours and one is the trucks? Correct. One is uh, – well, it's not mine. It's – one is at Firehouse Chefs, and right. the, the other one is at FHC Food Truck. We did that um, because if you happen to be a follower of Firehouse Chefs, but you're in Tennessee, you might not care that we're in Whittier today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so to, to understand the national fans compared to the local fans, that's the reason we did that. And same thing with uh, Facebook. You can find us. It's FHC Food Truck on Facebook and also Firehouse Chefs on Facebook and Firehouse Chefs on Instagram. So, yeah, this was a blast, and we hope to uh, come out with you guys and do this again. Yeah, we should do a remote together. Well, yeah. appa- apparently we're doing one in his uh, – Apparently you're doing it at the Leatherheads. <laughs> Something, yeah. yeah. The 40 by 40 foot cooler. I like it. <laughs> there we go. And for those of you that need information, please feel free to call the studio, reach out to Arvid at the com, or find us on Twitter or Facebook. And we also have additional information we can send you. They are still looking for investors, so if you want to be a part of the brew – or part out. of the FHC. No, it's fine. Thank you. So, ladies, no hate mail for the next seven days. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys, for having us on. Thanks so much for being here. That's another edition of the Three Guys Rant on Rant Radio Network. We'll be back next week. <laughs>